Valley of the Sun, bright blue sky, 60 degrees as kickoff approaches at State Farm Stadium for the 50th edition of one of college football's most historic postseason games. Welcome to the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl. Iowa State making its first appearance in a New Year's Six Bowl game. The Cyclones coming off their most successful regular season in school history. A once dormant program that is now flourishing under the leadership of head coach Matt Campbell. The building process and taking something and making it special, that's not a short-term fix. We're here for the long haul. Looking deep, double coverage! It's intercepted! I don't think we put any goals and expectations other than can we not be the lacking stop of college football. Kick on the way. No good. Iowa State wins at Austin. This has been a really special season uh, for our program. We've never let one game define who we are. Iowa State ranked 10th. College football playoff rankings was up to number six at one point before losing to Oklahoma in the Big 12 championship game. The opponent today, the Oregon Ducks, the champs of the Pac-12 Conference for the second straight year. It was an unprecedented path, to say the least, to get to this point for Oregon, replacing Washington, which had COVID issues. But the Ducks certainly won't apologize, and they won the one game they had to. Oregon repeats as the Pac-12 champion. This was had to be a physical game. We had to play our kind of football, and tremendous credit goes to these football players. We fought this year. So many trials and tribulations, we ain't even flinch. You know, got it done. Oregon won the Rose Bowl game last year, and now looks to capture the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl for the third time. And welcome to the booth. I'm Dave Pash alongside Mike Golick. Happy New Year. A lot of firsts today, Mike. You and I have worked together all year. This is the first time we've actually been in the same room. No idea what you look like until just now. <laughs> <laughs> this is also not a mirage in front of us. We're not right. in the studio. We can actually watch the game here in person. First time for Iowa State in the Fiesta Bowl. First time in a New Year's Six Bowl. Meanwhile, for Oregon, Mike, this is old hat. They've been in games like this, but it's the first time under these circumstances where they don't win their division, but they win their conference. So we saw the end. We just saw what they did at the end. Let's go back to the beginning. When the Pac-12 decided to play, they had a lot of opt-outs, including the best left tackle in the game. Their secondary was decimated. All they did, they won their first three games with the youngest team in the country. They lost their last two, but then found their way to that Pac-12 championship game, and they took care of business. They peaked at the right time. Their reward, a trip to Glendale, Arizona, to play in the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl against the Iowa State Cyclones. Head coach Matt Campbell has built an incredible program here. This year, nine first-team all-conference players, four AP All-Americans, the winningest senior class of all time at Iowa State, defensive player of the year in linebacker Mike Rose, coach of the year in Matt Campbell in the conference, and then you have Brees Hall, sixth in the Heisman, AP first-team All-American, offensive player of the year in the conference. He has done it all, and he is fun to watch. He has breakaway speed, which is fun to watch, but what I love most about him is his ability to avoid tackle, spin out of tackle, and Dave, his patience is incredible. Waits behind that old line, waits for the crack, and then hits it. Also today, Mike, a homecoming for the two starting quarterbacks. Brock Purdy of Iowa State is from Gilbert, went to Perry High School. Tyler Shuck of Oregon is from Chandler. He attended Hamilton High School. These guys have known each other forever. They played baseball together back in 2013, part of the Chandler Reds. They work out together in the offseason, including back in April. And with more on their story, here's Quint Kesnick. Well, when you talk to Brock Purdy, he'll tell you that he's been watching this game since he was a six-year-old. Driving in the bus today, said to me that he got goosebumps. When you watch him warm up, he certainly is excited. For Tyler Shuck, this homecoming may be more significant. When he was six, his mom, Dana, was diagnosed with cancer. She had surgery, chemo, rehab, and for the last 16 years, she has been in remission. Today is the first time she will watch her son, Tyler, start in a college football game. A homecoming, a dream fulfilled for the Shucks. 
He replaced Justin Herbert this year, who was the number six pick in the NFL draft by the Chargers, and just set the NFL rookie record for passing touchdowns in a single season. Oregon won the toss, deferred its selection, so it will kick to Iowa State. Kene Nuwongu is the heart and soul of this Iowa State team. He is deep, along with Jirel Brock. The 50th Fiesta Bowl is underway. It'll be a touchback, and we'll come out to the 25 for Iowa State as we look at our Chick-fil-A impact players. Well, I think it's going to be pretty easy to see who these guys are going to be and what they can do on the field. Uh, as I just mentioned, Brees Hall and everything he does running the ball and on defense for Oregon, Kayvon Thibodeau. What a freak athlete he is, third-team AP All-American, great edge rusher. But the leading tackler for Oregon has 38 tackles. Davey has 32. He can play the run as well. So be very interesting, especially on plays away with Brees Hall running to try and see him uh, chase it down on the backside. Thibodeau absolutely wrecked the Pac-12 championship game, winning MVP in that victory against USC. So out of the pistol here. On first and 10 from the Iowa State 25 yard line. Purdy off play action, dumps it off. And it's a first down for Akers, and it's fitting in Iowa State's initial New Year's Six game that the sixth year player, Landon Akers, one of the key guys on this team, gets the first down. Everybody got their eyes on Brees Hall. You see the whole defense moving that way. Landon said, That's cool. Keep an eye on him. I'm going to be out here all by myself, get the first play of this Fiesta Bowl. Gain of 16 on the play. Here's Brock Purdy with the pitch to Hall. And a ton of running room off that right side for Hall. It's a gain of nine. Purdy, a junior, just turned 21 years old. Set a ton of records this year at Iowa State. Had some late interceptions, though, that really yeah. hurt in the Oklahoma game. Yeah, you know, he's shown flashes. Coming into this year, I had him rate really high. Struggled that first game against Louisiana. The whole team did as a loss. And he's been a little up and down. His highs are very high, though, and, and I'm sure they're looking for that today. But he did have a little bit of struggle at some at points during the year. Purdy will throw it here. And tackled to the backfield is Dylan Sainer. There is the true freshman Noah Sewell, the leading tackler. That's Panay Sewell's brother. You talked about Panay, the outstanding tackle who opted out. 250 pound true freshman matched up against these tight ends for Iowa State that we'll talk about. It's a heck of an open field tackle there to make it third and short. Some great matchups to watch. Third and short here, watch for the tight ends. You'll see this team more than any other will have three tight ends in the game, two to three tight ends almost every play. And that's one of them. Charlie Kohler might be the best in motion to the far side as the pass is caught. And it's a first down to the 46 of Oregon. It's pulled in by Sean Shaw's not a tight end, but has the height to be one. He's six six. The receiving height edge over the secondary edge for Oregon is something to keep an eye on all day. You'll see like basketball players on these shorter routes. They do like boxing out on the shorter ones and they'll take their shots over the top. The 50 50 balls for Iowa State with the size of the receivers are like a 70 30 ball <laughs> to normal teams. Going to run it. Nwongu straight ahead. Pushes the pile down to the 42 yard line for a gain of four on the play. So here you go with the size of the wide receivers and tight ends. It's an unbelievable advantage that Iowa State has had. I mean, it, the monstrous players like Tariq Milton got in there at 5'11". <laughs> and the average Oregon for the DBs is six, is six foot. So a lot of times when they look covered down the field, especially on the long routes, Purdy's going to throw it up because he trusts his guys are going to be able to go get that ball over the shorter defensive players. Three tight ends in again. Play action here. Purdy in trouble, steps up and takes off. And Purdy's got the first down inside the 35 yard line. That's a 10 yard run for Purdy, who did have four rushing touchdowns during the season. 78 runs for 343 yards. He can run just enough to be dangerous. A, drop, a big drop by the linebackers for Oregon. He saw all that room and said he could make something of it, and he did. He moves the chains. Brees Hall back on the field. He's going to get the carry here, bouncing it to the outside. 
And pushed out of bounds at the 28-yard line. That's a five-yard run for the sophomore from Wichita, Kansas. Consensus All-American, the fourth in school history, and the first since Troy Davis 20 years ago. 6'7", 272, number 89, Dylan Saner there, just making the defender disappear and giving Brees Hall the edge. That's a, again, these tight ends, Kohler catches the most. The others will catch in, in important passes as well, but these are like extra linemen out on the field. Purdy on the half roll, and he was trying to hit Saner, couldn't hang on to it. It'll bring up third down and five. He gets a good block the last play. They try and reward him with a little bit of a throw there. Doesn't get many thrown his way as 16 catches on the year. The, the uh, for 197 yards, Kohler leads away with 39 receptions. He's the main guy to go to, but in short yardage, they do like those guys here, third and five. And you saw that shot of Matt Campbell now in his fifth year, Big 12 Coach of the Year for the third time. Could this be his last game at Iowa State? Got a lot of interest, not only collegiately, but from the NFL. Third down and five. Swing pass here. Broken tackle and a first down inside the 20 yard line. Xavier Hutchinson, their leading receiver. That's his 61st catch of the year. He had 10 grabs in the Big 12 title game. Again, play, good off offensive play, but the defender is right there. Beats the block of Saner, but misses the tackle. First and 10. Got to make that play. In the red zone now, here is Hall. Inside the 10, dragged down at the 8, maybe a touchdown saving tackle that time. So this is what I like about Hall. This place is play is supposed to go right. He starts it right, sees everybody going to the right, and then finds a hole to the left. Excellent block there by Xavier Hutchinson to, to pin his guy to the outside. He just cuts right underneath. Brees Hall's vision is, and, and his vision and how quickly he can make the decision on where he wants to go, really one of his strong points. Well, they're a yard short of the line to gain here inside the Oregon 10 on the opening possession of the day. All going to be close to the first down. And they're going to spot him short to be third down in inches here. Already a five minute opening possession. Matt Campbell squad. Yeah, and this is what they do. Nothing, nothing too crazy. You see the short passes, the runs. They'll take their shots down the field. You'll see it. But in this first drive, they're really showing Oregon a, a bunch of different plays. Oregon really can't zone in on anything right now to key anybody right now. So I'm sure you'll have your three tight ends in here again, or at least two. You got three, all three of them in there. Allen, Saner, and Kohler to either block or catch that short pass. And Oregon's got 10 in the box here. Hall able to get the first down though. Good push up front by that veteran offensive line. They are without one of their key guys though. Jake Remsburg was injured in the Big 12 title game. So Joey Ramos making his fifth start of the year at right tackle. It is a fresh set of downs first and goal for the Cyclones. Right down the middle there a little stutter step by Hall straight over the center Colin Newell who I love this kid grew up selling programs at the stadium for Iowa State as a kid and now here he is people are selling programs in the stadium with his name in it very cool all tripped up at the line of scrimmage Mace Funa knocked him down it'll be second and goal big test here for the Oregon defense now they've given up the, a very consistent drive but at this point if you can somehow hold them to a field goal attempt you'll take that as a win yep play 14 coming up only a select uh, number of fans here just friends and family members about 1700 here at State Farm Stadium Glendale Arizona third time Oregon's played in this game first time for Iowa State Ducks were here eight years ago beat Kansas State Marcus Mariota the quarterback here's Purdy off play action and the pass is caught at the one unable to get into the end zone was Kohler though but inside the one it'll be third and goal. What a nice tackle by Jabal Hill again you're going to the big tight end 272 pounds and here's Hill who missed that tackle earlier in the drive doesn't miss it there. Excellent job wrapping up and forcing him out of bounds. Jamal Hill replacing Javon Holland who was one of those opt outs Holland's going to be a high draft pick. They've had him on both sides of the ball. Obviously the Pac-12 started later than everybody else did. Didn't begin till November. 
Third down and goal for Iowa State. You're going to get a motion in here and a nice run with Hall. And Hall walks in. Touchdown, Iowa State. Great opening possession for the Cyclones. Excellent drive for Iowa State. Jared Rush was split out. He wasn't going to stay split out. He's going to motion in and be the lead blocker, try and kick out. Doesn't even really need it. There is a hole right in the middle. Saner and Ramos help provide the rest of that O-line, pushing their guys to the side. A huge hole, something you don't expect on short yards right at the gut. So the 20th rushing touchdown for Brees Hall, 22nd overall as the extra point makes it 7-0. 12 consecutive games of the rushing touchdown for Hall and the Cyclones with a 15 play drive that takes up half the first quarter and a 7-0 lead over Oregon. Coverage provided by Goodyear. Keep driving from the first kickoff to the final whistle. Goodyear, more driven. Dave Pash, Mike Golick, Quinn Kesnick in Glendale for the 50th Fiesta Bowl, which moved to Glendale back in 2007. Boise State knocked off Oklahoma in that great finish in overtime. Ohio State has played in the most Fiesta Bowls, nine. And if this continues for Brees Hall, he'd be in pretty good company for. Uh, I got a long way to go, obviously, but whoever wins MVP, the last two, Joe Burrow, who was the number one pick in the draft last year, Trevor Lawrence last year is probably the number one pick in the 2021 NFL draft. That's nice company. Yeah. If he gets there, again, long way to go. Obviously, Trevor Lawrence, his season is over with uh, Clemson falling to Ohio State last night. Justin Fields went off, six touchdown passes for the Buckeyes, and they pop it up here. And the fair catch made at the 27 yard line by a tight end, DJ Johnson. So Tyler Shuck will take the field for the Ducks when we come back. You're watching the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl. The PlayStation Fiesta Bowl, brought to you by PlayStation. Play has no limits. Capital One, what's in your wallet? and Progressive Insurance. Save when you bundle auto, home, or motorcycle insurance. Visit Progressive.com. So Crash Bandicoot, Ratchet and Clank from Ratchet and Clank ripped apart. They're all here. No fans in attendance, but a lot of the PlayStation characters in the stands joining us today for the 50th PlayStation Fiesta Bowl. Along with yours truly, Dave Pash, Mike Golan, Quinn Kesnick, Oregon Trails, Iowa State, 7 0. And will be on offense for the first time. Well, let's what the Iowa State did nothing out of the ordinary, and that's what Andy Avalos, the D coordinator of Oregon, is going to say to his defense guys. They're running exactly what we worked on. Settle down now. Let's see Oregon run what they run. Tyler Shuck, sophomore from Chandler, Arizona, about 45 minutes from the stadium. And he will run it here on first down, and he's going to get dropped for a loss of one by Orion Vance. The coaches want the swagger and confidence that Chuck showed earlier in the season back because it was Anthony Brown, the transfer from Boston College, that played really well against USC in the Pac-12 championship game. Chuck was up and down in that game, so we could see a lot of Brown depending on how things go. Second down and 11. Chuck's first throw of the game is low, but the catch is made by Micah Pittman at the 37-yard line, first down. Yeah, and more to your point, just what the coaches said, just, just let it go. Just don't, you know, a lot of times you get a grad transfer coming in. Now you won the starting job, but, you know, are you feeling a pressure like if you have to play perfectly to not have the backup come in, the kid who transferred in? They just want to play free and easy. They want Chuck to just chuck. There you go. And throw it around. He'll keep it here in the quarterback run past the 40 and out near the 42. Gain of four on that one for Chuck. Yeah, at six foot five, 220, 225 pounds. He has no problem taking off. See more and more of that, even, even with the smaller quarterbacks, quarterback powers, you get that extra blocker with the back. Mario Cristobal, third year 
as the Oregon head coach just signed a huge extension shot to the air again going to dump it off here to Travis die and die into Iowa State territory all the way to the 40 yard line for 18 yards. Excellent job by the old lineman. Ryan walked the guard. Alex Forthight to center. Watch these guys out in space. Big guys out in space, getting on blocks, staying on blocks. It's impressive when the big guys go out on screens and they can stay up and not just throw at the legs and keep their feet moving. Travis Dow get a lot of work today. C.J. Verdell, a 1,200 yard back a year ago. He's been bothered with a hand injury, will not play. Shucks pass caught by Pittman, able to stiff arm the defender and get the first down to the 29. Gain of 11. Oregon is inside the 30 here. Well, I'm going to do it because you did. Shuck is chucking. Right? Good throws, letting him yeah. go. Sharp. Yep. Just the one was a little low. Didn't let his receiver do a whole lot after. There's C.J. Verdell got a hand injury. Missed the Pac-12 title game. But they they like Travis Dye. Also, Sean Dollar is a freshman. He had a good game against USC Rush for over 50 yards. We'll see him as well. Big hole for Dye up the middle. Inside the 10 and all the way down to the five-yard line. First and goal after a 24-yard run for Travis Dye. Oh, Hunter Campmoyer, number 48. Watch this block. He is just going to destroy in here to set up for this run. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, man, that was a fantastic block. Orion oh, Vance, unfortunately, on the receiving end of that one. Great job by Campmoyer, a former D lineman. Now playing tight end. Anthony Brown is in a quarterback right now for Oregon, but I, I just love the joy in your voice of what happens in, in the meat grinder there on wow. the offensive line. Brown going to keep it, and he's into the end zone for the touchdown. He scored twice against USC. A touchdown pass on his first play of that game, a touchdown run on his first play of this one. This is what defensive coordinator John Haycock talks about the offenses of today. He still calls it kind of the old fashioned triple option but it's an option with a pass not not your normal fullback to pitch man which you can see but it's also could be a, a running back and then you see him just kind of shuffling out and he has the receiver out there to throw to as one of the options but he had a clear hole for the end zone. Brown started 28 games at Boston College but had two seasons cut short by injury before transferring to Oregon. Game is tied at seven. What an answer by Oregon after Iowa State drives down the field. Oregon does the exact same thing. Huge, huge run up the middle by Dye. And then the red zone quarterback Anthony Brown comes in. He has an option and his option is I'm going to go straight ahead to Pater. Want to stay up to date? Just tell Siri, show me upcoming bowl games. Coming up tonight, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, ESPN, AM and North Carolina meet in the Capital One Orange Bowl at Hard Rock Stadium. Kellen Mond, according to Todd McShay's latest rankings, is seventh ranked quarterback coming out for this year's draft. See the numbers for Mon this year. AM ranked fifth in the country. There's no ranking on Sam Howell because he's a true sophomore. He's got to come back for another year. There'll be a chip on the shoulder of AM after watching yeah, uh, right. some of the games yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know where you're going. Sorry. Nuwagu on the return past the 20 yard line, makes a nice move and is out across the 30. 7 7, 4 0, 7 to go in the first quarter. Another gorgeous January day in the AZ. The two starting quarterbacks in this game have been friends for a long time. Brock Purdy, who attended Perry High School, Tyler Shuck, Hamilton High School, and Chandler. They met four times on the football field in high school. This game in October of 2017 was a 65 to 63 final score with Purdy's team winning. Purdy threw for 380 yards in that game, rushed for 166. These guys played baseball together growing up. They have the same quarterback coach here in Arizona. They work out together in the offseason. They're the same age 
That's and pretty both cool players thing. off to a good start. Pretty cool thing, hanging out in the offseason the way they do, where, as you mentioned, working out together. You sounded a little too giddy with that score, though. As a former defensive player, no, nah, not so much. Well, we're, we're headed for high scoring <laughs> so far here. Each team with uh, an opening drive touchdown to start this game. Second possession for Iowa State from the 31 yard line and they're going to run it again here. Brees Hall out to the 34 so it's a gain of three brought down by Isaac Slade. Matuatia. So uh, again after the last series I, I, I'm sure Andy Avalos the D coordinator sat his guys down and said all right everybody take a breath. Got to drive under your belt out of the way they went down they scored but now let's go over they did nothing out of the ordinary there were no trick plays they've done everything that we've practiced for now we just have to go out and execute and play our, our when you have your man to man situation win it get off your blocks make the tackles they run Hall up the middle once again another two or three yard pickup putting Iowa State in third down. Mike I think it's a situation where Oregon defensively what they saw on film is now being confirmed in person and I think the issue is what are we going to do these guys are 6'6 260 pounds we're trying to cover them or trying to get off the of blocks with guys who are six foot 180 pounds so what do you do right now if you're Oregon. Well and listen you use leverage you know not every bigger person blocks the smaller person use your hands use your leverage dip your shoulder you find a way to beat that block and make that tackle. Iowa State four of four on third down some movement up front. Derek Schweiger. So this really after we get the call here. False start 64 on the offense five yard penalty third down. So now third and nine Dave this is kind of really the first play where we can see them kind of take off on the pass rush. So Kayvon Thibodeau a guy who had 11 pressures number five for Oregon 11 pressures in the Pac-12 championship game. This is really kind of the first play where you you're pretty sure this is going to be a straight drop back pass and just let him go and see what happens. Also let's see if Iowa State brings some help over there to say we're not leaving you one on one. Two years ago Thibodeau the number one overall high school prospect in America. Purdy the pass is caught close to the first down is Kohler. Let's see where they spot the ball forward progress is enough to move the stick. So they pick up third down and nine a gain of ten out to the forty two. So they help on, on Thibodeau with the left guard and then and then the route is just a simple route. You need nine yards. You're going to see Kohler go ten yards. That's all you're going to see. That's what they they just want to move the chains ten yards wall everybody off put the ball up where he gets it and just move the sticks. So a little help on Thibodeau throw to your big tight end. We keep the drive alive. 36 of 7 45 yards passing so far Brees Hall 34 rushing yards and a touchdown. Here's Nuwangu, the backup tailback and he's going to lose yardage. The Ducks defensive line all over that one Sewell came out of there with the ball. But they ruled that the runner was down it'll be second and 11. So already some of the inside plays that worked on the first drive for Iowa State Oregon doing a better job. So and again we, we saw Sewell come out with the ball did the ball come out. I think the whistle blew Yeah, I though. think so as well he was going backward so the, the the ball did come out but he was going backward and the whistle was blowing. Four man rush for the Ducks. Purdy's pass in traffic. And is it caught? How did he? What a grab. That? Kohler going down. Hard to see there right at the logo, but Kohler made the grip catch for a first down at the 45 of the Ducks. Oregon ran a tackle end stunt. The end came underneath and was going right to the face of Purdy. He just kind of backed away and threw the ball. What a great catch. Here's Hall running left, and he's cut down. Good defensive play that time by. Ante Manning but you look at you know, Charlie Kohler who is from Norman Oklahoma he was a high school basketball teammate of Trey Young yeah. and is now a finalist for the Mackey Award which goes to the best tight end in college football he's a junior. I have a feeling that's going to go to Kyle Pitts the tight end from Florida you would think probably who, who opted out of their bowl game. Um, Kohler though he's a, you're going to see that young man on Sundays no doubt about it. Purdy off play action and wide open 
as Sainer, and he's down to the 35 yard line. You can look at this Iowa State team, you're going to see a bunch of these guys from this roster in the NFL. I mean, we talked a lot about Brees Hall. The guy that Brees Hall replaced, he's a thousand yard rusher with the Chicago Bears right now, and David Montgomery. So Matt Campbell starting to build it here where you get a lot of guys with pro potential. It's not just the, the grinders, the hard workers, it's guys with legit pro talent. First quarter in the books, a quick one here in Glendale. Iowa State took up half the quarter on its first drive. Brees Hall with his 20th rushing touchdown of the season. And then Oregon with Anthony Brown, number two quarterback, took it into the end zone for the Ducks to tie it at seven after one. Mike, you just had Texas four yeah. days ago. I don't yeah. know if you saw this coming with Tom Herman. I, I did not. The thought process was that Urban Meyer, if, if he was going to be in the picture, that that may happen. Uh, but when Urban Meyer said he wasn't interested in coming back into coaching now, everyone thought Herman was safe. Ends up with 32 wins. I'm fortunate enough to call his last one as they really took care of business against Colorado in the Alamo Bowl. Uh, fourth year. But we know the standards for Texas, right? We keep, it's like the U and Texas. When they start winning, you say they're back. You know, are they back to what they were? But never at a consistent level with Tom Herman for them to now make that move. You know, it's good for Sark, too, after what happened at USC right, to get a right. second chance. Obviously, for those of us that are in the business, he's a great guy and someone that is a terrific mind. So it'll be interesting to see because Tom Herman's a pretty good coach as well. Really good right. offensive mind also if Sark can do any better than Herman did with the Longhorns. Start of the second quarter. Here's Purdy keeping it and Pickett drags him down at the 31 yard line. Four yard run. Yeah and, and to, you know put, put a ball on that. Well, what a feather in a cap. Not that he needs them. He has enough of them. They're called national championships. But Nick Saban just keeps losing coaches. He keeps bringing in coaches and they keep winning. And he's got guys that have gone on to the NFL like Brian Dayball is going to probably be a head coach next year or the year after that. He's a candidate right now. Uh, so whether it's guys that you know it all started with the Bill Belichick right. tree Saban going back to being a D quarter court for him with the Cleveland Browns. Hall running off the left side going to come up a yard short of the line to gain. It'll be third down and one again. It's picking on the tackle for Oregon. I, I can't stress enough when you watch Hall run and, and his old linemen have to love him and they'll love him at the next level as well because he does a great job and this time it was not only the old lineman but Kohler the tight end as well who led. He just tucks in behind and, and I'll keep using the word I'm sure I'll overuse it, it's what I do patience. He's so patient and waits for that little crack in the defense and then makes that move. So third down and one here. Paul, boy, I think he got it with the ball there just at the last second. We'll see where they spot it. Might be fourth down. You know, just to finish up on the Saban stuff, uh, it is going to be fourth down. Mario Cristobal, the head coach at Oregon, he was with right. Nick Saban in yep. Alabama for a little bit, then came out to uh, Oregon with uh, with Willie Taggart. When Taggart got the uh, Florida State job, uh, Cristobal was named the interim coach right before the Las Vegas Bowl, ended up getting the head job, and they signed a huge contract to stay. There were rumors out there about maybe Auburn, some other places where there was interest. Iowa State fourth down and inches going for it here. Brees Hall gets the first down and more to the 19. So they get seven yards there on fourth down and one. So you get five old linemen, three monstrous tight ends. It really gives Brees Hall kind of his choice on where he wants to go. He sees he knows he only needs a yard, not going to get a lot. He knows he's not going to get all the way to the end zone, just enough to move the chains. They're, they're, they're very effective on their drives. Again, not a lot of huge plays unless Brees breaks one off. Every now and then, Purdy's going to take his shot with Sean Shaw, the 6'6 receiver who's fast and runs those go routes. But for the most part, this is what you see out of Iowa State. Purdy keeps it here, and he's down about the 15-yard line. Gain of four on the play. Brees Hall already, by the way, with 13 carries. That's the third rush for Purdy. Nuwangu has two attempts, and Hall back on the field here. You know, they just make a defense say, 
what, what, what more do we need to do? Do we have to change something up? They started playing a little better, especially on the inside runs. It's been the, the plays off tackle and outside that have been hurting Oregon the most here. How about this, a 28th play already that Iowa State's run? <laughs> Oregon's run seven. But they've only had the ball once. Hall trying to pick a hole. It's not there. Stood up and pushed back after a gain of maybe one. Barone McKinley was coached by his dad in high school. Bright young man. We oh. talked to him for about 15 minutes last night. He made the stick there. Love that kid. Wow. He goes on Twitter on Sunday games and breaks down plays that are going on. I said, so is your route college, NFL, and then in the broadcasting business? He's like, Yes, yes, sir. And he called me sir, which made me feel really old, you know, because he said he watched, you know, I said he said when he was in middle school, which again made me feel old. But boy, what a special young man he is. Third down and five. Here comes Thibodeau. Purdy throws a pass wide open in the end zone. Touchdown. Kohler somehow got away from all the Ducks DBs. Purdy family is very, very happy on that one. And listen, that was just a flat out bust of coverage. You know, no, nobody is going to be that wide open. Thibodeau was getting a rush off the left side of the defense that time to put some pressure on Purdy, but a busted coverage of Kohler wide open. So you had that 15 play drive to start the game. Now a 14 play drive and Charlie Kohler with his seventh receiving touchdown. This season. Connor Asali puts it through 14 7 Iowa State. So it's Brock Purdy back home. The Gilbert native playing in front of fans, friends, and family members today with the touchdown pass to give Iowa State a seven point lead early in the second. They passed Mike Gola, Quint Kesnick in Glendale at State Farm Stadium. PlayStation Fiesta Bowl. Iowa State has run 29 plays. Scoring drives of 15 and 14 plays engineered by Brock Purdy. Kohler with a touchdown in the last possession. They are methodical, aren't they? They're methodical, and you're waiting for, for Oregon, waiting to see if they hit that big play. Well, they've only had the ball once, yeah. and they scored. They've had the ball for three minutes and ten seconds, but went right down the field against Iowa State's defense. We'll see what they do here. Another short kickoff. Taken on the ten-yard line. Chris Hudson. And he stopped short of the 25. So we take a look at our protection spotlight brought to you by Allstate. This blows my mind. Oregon last year at the end of the season, 223 starts. That was the most in all FBS. Everybody's gone. Now, Panay Sewell could have been here, the best left tackle in the game. He opted out. Only one start coming into this year, and that was from Stephen Jones, and that start was in 2018. All five linemen are new starters this year, and kudos T.J. Bass, Alex Forsythe, the left guard and center, honorable mention Pac-12, and the right tackle uh, was honorable mention Pac-12 was on. I'm sorry, Forsythe was a second teamer. So three guys making the conference uh, conference team. Here's a jet sweep. That might have ended up being a pass. Pittman is dropped back at the 17-yard line by Lawrence White. So that play loses about 10 yards. So the offensive line didn't do a great, great job no. there. But but Mario Cristobal, he, he's an you know, offensive line coach. That was his position on that Alabama staff in 2016 when they won the national title, by the way, out here in Glendale before he ended up going to Oregon. The thing about Joe Moorhead, who comes in as the old coordinator after Mississippi State head coach, he comes in, has got a new old line, a new starting quarterback, and then they have no football for a long time. Die. And he lost the ball, got knocked down. Iowa State's on it. And the Cyclones come up with a takeaway. Orion Vance has the ball at the 15 yard line. Travis Die coughs it up. And Iowa State with an opportunity now to go up two scores. 
Jaquan Bailey. Die American DN knocked it out. Die is trying to tell everybody he was down. Now, certainly from the upper body was not down. I couldn't see if a knee was down or not. But the call, remember, the call on the field was fumble and recovery by Iowa State. And it actually looked like Ishim Young, even though Bailey was in, it looked like Ishim Young was the one that, that knocked it loose. He had two forced fumbles during the season. Yep. They're going. No review on that. Said the ball was out, keeping the call on the field. Turnovers were a big problem for Oregon. 107th in the country. You see Bailey dragging him down, and then it does look yeah, like. Definitely without. Yeah, the knee was not down. Watch Ashim Young, number one, come in there with a forearm, and the ball gets popped out. Oh, that's a great view right there. Golden opportunity here for the Cyclones. Purdy off play action rolls right end zone pass big hit knocks the ball out incomplete Mikhail Wright dislodging it from Joe Skates in the end zone. Mikhail Wright with the hit a nice throw by Purdy looks to be on the spot but Mikhail Wright comes in with the shoulder great hit that's the old term we used to use all the time separate man from ball and that's exactly what Wright did. Well played. First team all Pac-12 defensive back sophomore makes the play for Oregon so it's second down and 10. Birdie's going to give it to Brees Hall here wrapped up by Sewell Noah Sewell he makes the stop at the 17. Noah Sewell with that tackle. The freshman spent the last series in the tent having his left ankle or foot retaped. Came out of the tent, put a thumb up, and he's back in there. This is a young player with, who's going to be a star. He's a, he's a monster. He's still learning and doses the Pac 12 Defensive Player of the Year. One of three brothers, one of four brothers to play college football. And obviously, Panay is uh, the other one. They are from American Samoa, moved to Utah in 2012. Third down and seven here. It's big down for the defense for Oregon. Purdy's pass is caught inside the 10 as Hall goes over the top and comes up just short. We'll see if Iowa State goes for it here on fourth down and inches. They're going to keep the offense on the field. Iowa State loves the crossing routes with the tight ends, bringing the back out of the backfield and cross them. It's exactly what they did. And as we're seeing more and more in college football, guys trying to hurdle people. <laughs> Certainly saw it last night. Najah Harris did it. Uh, for Alabama. So fourth and very, very short. Not shocking here with the size they have on the line and tight ends that they're going for. They converted on a fourth down earlier in the ball game. Brees Hall straight ahead, and he's got it. Down to the four yard line, so a fresh set of downs inside the five for Iowa State. Basically, the, the exact same look when. Hall got it the first touchdown of the game, bringing the man in motion for a kick out and having him go straight up the middle. Another big test for Mario Crystal Ball's defense right here. Again, they were put in a bad situation with the turnover, so I'll say it again. You can hold them to a field goal. Design quarterback run for Purdy. He gets pushed back by Mace Funa. You got a face full of Mace there. <laughs> well, to the point of attack, big hit on the quarterback. You know, Quint asked me earlier, you know, how do you take on those big guys? And Mace Funa just took on Dylan Sainer. 6'7, 272. Mace Funa is 6'3, 260. So a little smaller, but not a lot smaller, but he took him on with leverage. Got lower, low man wins, held his ground, came off the block and made the play. Well done. Nice play. Oregon defense has done much better against the run the last couple games. And this is just their seventh game this year. Won the Pac-12 title. Purdy, pump fake, gets around the defender Thibodeau. Now throws back in the end zone. Two Cyclones are over there. It's incomplete. 
Hutchinson caught the ball but was out of bounds. So it'll be third down and goal now for Iowa State. Well, Purdy bought himself some time. D Lyman, you're kind of taught not to jump. Well, let's look at the end first. Yeah, he's definitely out of bounds with that right foot, but he bought himself time to do it by getting Kayvon Thibodeau to jump in the air. It's a good call official right there. And Incomplete. Big down again here for Oregon trying to get off the field after giving Iowa State the short field with that fumble by Dye. Third down and goal from the five. Purdy to the air. Caught at the oh, one. Short. Did not get in. So Hall made the catch. They they went for it at the five yard oh, line. You got to think they're going to do have it again here. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely have to. Tried to clear everybody out and just dump it to Hall. Good recognition. Four defenders right there on the goal line. Didn't let him get through. So again, you see 43. Jared Russ is going to line up out to the left and he'll motion in. And he'll be a kickout guy unless they keep him in motion and maybe throw the the outlet pass to him. No, he's blocking. Whoa! Hall hit at the one and didn't get in. Oregon's defensive line got off some blocks. Brandon Dorless, Slade, Oregon with a huge stop on the goal line. So. Something I got to do a whole lot as a former D lineman in that situation. What you're taught to do is make a pile. Big guys up front, go down low, make a pile. Let your linebackers come over the top and make a play. You had guys coming from the outside there. They made a new line of scrimmage, a yard back. Brees Hall had nowhere to go. Great stop by Oregon. They were put in conflict with the turnover. The defense steps up. The PlayStation Fiesta Bowl, brought to you by Taco Bell's Nacho Fries and AT&T 5G. PlayStation Fiesta Bowl that started 50 years ago because Arizona State kept getting left out of other bowl games. So they just started the Fiesta Bowl. Arizona State played in the first three. One way to do it. Eight national championship games. Oregon played in one of those National title games against Auburn here in Glendale and lost to Cam Newton. So Oregon takes over inside the one and Anthony Brown who scored the touchdown is in the game at quarterback. He's going to throw it here and it's over the head of the intended target Hunter Camp Boyer incomplete some pushing and shoving afterwards as Johnny Johnson hits Anthony Johnson. So let's go back to the goal line play here and watch the right guard in Daryl Simmons on number 50, Popo Amavai. Amavai just gets right underneath him, makes a fantastic play, redistributing him in the backfield to help make the play. Another pass play out of the end zone, and that's a strike. Johnson on the catch. So it's a first down for the Ducks. And then. When that happens to you, this is what happens on the sideline. You get an earful from the coach. Simmons knows that he knew it as soon as the play was going on and the defender got underneath him and took him into the backfield. It's a, you, you just know it. I mean, you, again, the coach is gonna obviously critique you and get on you for it in the moment, but nobody knows it more than the player when it happened. Only the 12th play run by Oregon. They've had the ball for four and a half minutes. Brown back to throw, and another strike. Out past the 30 is Campboy. How about the decision by the Oregon coaching staff to go to the veteran Anthony Brown with the Ducks backed up and then keep him in the game for the and, rest and, of the drive? And they went in with it. They, we knew he was going to be the red zone quarterback, but they also said they thought the beginning of the second quarter, you know, their first drive in the second quarter, that he was going to get the call. And even though it was on the one yard line, they had confidence enough in him to do it, and he certainly got him on that hole. Right, so part of the plan, but still where yeah, he is in the field. Right. But look, the guy started a ton of games at Boston College, so this is the first year that Chuck has started. Off the fingertips there of Johnson. The pass that took a while to get there, incomplete second down. So again, for those who may not know Anthony Brown, three years he started at Boston College, 40 touchdowns, 20 interceptions, at the end of the 17 season and the 19 season, he was hurt toward the end of those seasons and missed the end of those years. Grad transfer came to Oregon, never, never saw the field 
until the Pac-12 championship game and threw those couple of touchdowns and now going to get more time today it looks like. Gonna throw it here on second down and 10 and it's pulled in close to the line to gain. Jalen Red on the catch he did not play in the Rose Bowl last year because of personal reasons. It is a first down for Oregon at the 44 yard line. By the way I was down on the field before the game watching the quarterbacks warm up Anthony Brown can hum the ball. He, he, he's got a little muster behind it. When he wants to fit it in somewhere it's going to get there. He's three of five passing Shuck was three of three. Gonna run it here die able to make a man miss. And thrown out of bounds at the 41 yard line. Travis Dye fumbled the ball deep in Oregon territory on that last possession. So it's his first attempt since. But he picks up 15 yards here. Watch his move. Orion Vance is Orion Vance is right there to make the play 34 again. Defense called right there to make the play. And it was the skill of the offensive player, in this case, Travis Dye making that juke move to get the extra yards. From the 41 of Iowa State, Brown to the air, all day to throw, and the catch is made along the sideline by Devin Williams inside the 30-yard line. Well, you mentioned that Anthony Brown did not play until the Pac-12 championship game. He throws a touchdown pass this very first attempt to Jalen Red. He had two touchdowns in that game as Oregon won to get to the Fiesta Bowl for the third time. And again, they were the replacement for Washington, which had COVID issues. Oregon finished second in its division. Play action here. Brown being chased, throws back across the middle to Pittman. And Micah Pittman landed on a player, so he's still alive there and able to crawl to the 16-yard line and get the first down. Boy, that was something. He had A, space to run, B, a short receiver he could have thrown to had space to run, but he waited to go down the field a little more. And as I said, rolling right and just rifled the ball. Micah Pittman, whose dad Michael played a long time in Arizona for the Cardinals. Also, brother Michael, who played at USC and now with the Colts. A rookie there, I believe. So Brown staying on the field at quarterback. He'll keep it here inside the five, into the end zone for the second time. Touchdown, Ducks, a chance to tie it with the point after. Your three guys inside Ryan Walk, Alex Forsythe, TJ Bass, the center, and two guards. Look at that. Watch these three in here. Clear it out. Excellent job. What a great job. And then George Moore, the left tackle, turning back to make sure he kept his, his defender walled off. Well done by that old line, that inexperienced offensive line at the beginning of the season. So they get the stop on the goal line and fourth down for Iowa State, and then they go down the field, literally the length of the field, and tie the game with the point after. One of the fastest halves in the modern era of college football. <laughs> it's only an hour, we're three minutes left in the second quarter. Provided by Goodyear, no matter what the season throws your way, keep moving forward. Goodyear, more driven. Dave Pash, Mike Golick, Quint Kesnick in Glendale, Arizona. Tie game, 14 apiece, late in the second quarter. Tyler Shuck started the game at quarterback. Anthony Brown, though, has scored two rushing touchdowns. And because everybody can come back in college football, it'll be interesting with the uh, you know, Justin Herbert hold, holding down the job for four years and then Shuck winning it. And obviously a shortened camp. Right. What will happen next year? Short kickoff, but the fair catch signal it's made at the 17-yard line. Let's go to Matt Barry. The roof is open here in the stadium. I mean, it is fantastic. Exactly what Arizona should be. 
Did your career start out, your broadcasting career post-NFL yes. start yes. out? I was doing some ESPN stuff, but I was doing local radio here, KGME Radio. Me and my Bruce Jacobs was my partner, and that's where I saw it started. Purdy steps away from trouble, and Purdy has the first down and more. Hit as he was sliding, and a flag comes down. Gain of 14, but they're going to tack on 15 more because of the hit on the quarterback who was sliding. It was Isaac Slade Matautia came in there as Purdy was starting his slot. You know, you're chasing down the quarterback. You're trying to get him down. And he, he is starting to slide, no doubt about it. He just leaned in with his head and his shoulder. So you're chasing from the side from the side and behind. He breaks to you and you drop your head down. Might be targeting too. Led with a crown of the helmet, it looked like. After the play was over, personal foul, late hit, unnecessary rough, unnecessary roughness on the defense with targeting. Number there you 41. Go. Penalty is 15 yards added to the end of the run. The previous play is under further review. That's a double whammy, right? Yeah. I mean, you lose a starter at linebacker, your leading tackler. They'll look at it, but it appeared to be targeting. We'll step aside with 3.08 to go in the half. So replay has confirmed the targeting on Slade Matutia. So let's bring in Rogers Redding, our rules analyst. Rogers, did you agree with the call? This is a good call. First of all, the, the ball carrier is defenseless when he goes down like that. So this is targeting on really two counts. One is this a forcible attack to the head and neck area, and also he led with the crown of the helmet. So either of the two targeting rules would come into play here. So that's a good call, and I'm glad the replay confirmed it. You know, in, in this situation, again, you see him break back, that he's trailing. Purdy breaks back toward him, so he dives in. By rule, it's absolutely the correct call, but I, I will continue to say I do not like players getting tossed out of the game. 15 yards, I, I do not think they should be thrown. Purdy taking a shot down the field. It's caught inside the 20-yard line by Hutchinson. DJ so, James in coverage, and a huge play down inside the 15. Thibodeau got his first good rush for Oregon. He kicked, Purdy takes a hit, but just a straight shot. I said they'd love to take their shots. Hutchinson 6-3. <laughs> Brees Hall trying to get outside, hand fighting with James, and he's out of bounds at the 10, a six-yard run. Purdy took a hit there, but got the throw off again. He These go routes, you can be covered, and Purdy doesn't care because these guys are tall, and he said, I'm going to take my shot. I'll throw it on the backside if I have to, but I'm going to give my taller receivers that chance to outjump the defender. Second down and three, Brees Hall, 18 carries already here in the first half for the nation's leading rusher. Hall will get it again and pushes the pile to the first down. It'll be first and goal at the five. You know, they can almost, Dave, line up and say, this is where we're going to run as they're going up, up tempo here. Two tight ends to the same side run right over them in the tackle. It's Hall again, waiting for that hole to open. Hall powers his way to the goal line. He is just short. It'll be second and goal from there on the 20th carry of the first half for Brees Hall. So we saw Oregon start to get off blocks a little better here. Iowa State staying on their blocks. Look at the leg drive here. And then obviously the push from the offensive players as well, but Hall keeping his balance and using that leg drive. Boy, didn't it look like he got in, Mike? It, it, Need to see that Play one clock again. to one minute, 48 seconds. One, so four, Oregon eight. called a timeout. They want to have some time left for the offense. Right. But I, man, I thought the ball got across there unless they blew it dead. It's a nice scrum in there. But again, Hall, great balance, great leg drive. It was like playing when I would play against the Washington Redskins, the Washington football team. Now, you knew exactly what they were going to do, right? And they and they were still able to execute it. So here you go, Thank you. your tight ends and your left tackle. I, I think his knee went down. I couldn't tell, let's look at this view. His right knee, I believe, hits the ground before he's in. 
And let's watch the ball too. See the knee is down there. Yeah, look where the ball is. Isn't yeah, it's isn't it right? It might be. That one was close. All right, second and goal. Again, it's important. Iowa State got stopped down here last time on the goal line. Purdy fakes the pass and gets in the end zone for the touchdown. Well, not shocking that Oregon really plugged up the middle because of what they did the last drive. This time, Purdy pulls the ball. Puts a fake on Mace Funa a bit. Number 47 out here like he's going to throw. Mace goes up just a hair and gives Brock just the room he needs to get in the end zone. So Brock Purdy with a passing touchdown and now a rushing touchdown. His fifth rushing score of the year. And Iowa State back in front. And the point after makes it 21 to 14. Enough time for Oregon to do something here when it gets the ball back. Minute 44 and two timeouts remaining. I think the first interesting thing for Oregon is going to be which quarterback comes out. Yeah, right. Because Anthony Brown coming out last series wasn't a surprise. Because as they said at the beginning of the second quarter they were going to do that maybe a bit of a surprise to your point Dave of it being on their own one yard line but took them right down the field. So this is one of those where I start to look down on the field and try and get a gauge for knowing who's going to go on the field and both quarterbacks have their helmet on of course. So <laughs> No indication just yet. Well, they don't want uh, Iowa State knowing what they're thinking. Matt Campbell telling us this week that ball placement on his kickoffs is critical. They were victimized by some poor coverage against Louisiana in week one, then Oklahoma and Texas. So look for a directional sky kick right here as the Cyclones will kind of take their medicine and, and not give Oregon the chance for a big play. Over the head of Johnson, oh, it's a live ball. ball. Iowa State had the first crack at it, and the Cyclones got it inside the 30-yard line. DJ Johnson is trying to make an over-the-shoulder catch. He actually did that earlier, but couldn't come up with that one. It was kicked perfectly and recovered by Iowa State. Rory Walling comes up with the special teams play and the Cyclones in business inside the 30. And the thing that helped Iowa State here, watch the ball. It draws back like a golf shot. It hit and bounces backward. That's what gave Iowa State the shot at the ball. If that would have just did that forward roll, it probably would have gone out of bounds. But it sticks and goes backward. And then great, great pursuit by Iowa State. As you mentioned, you saw he did that before, the over-the-shoulder catch. You had to recognize it was coming. And that was a great kick because it made the, the, the receiver try and go backward to catch the ball, which he obviously had an issue. That was Drake Nettles with a beautiful kick over the shoulder of Johnson. They're going to look at this. So again, it went 10 yards, so it's, it's a free ball. It, it doesn't so just we'll start there. It does not have to be touched by the receiving team once it goes 10 yards. I think they also want to look to does Walling go out of bounds here. Does Johnson touch it while he's out of bounds? And then I don't think Walling ever I, went out of bounds. I don't there think was, so there either. was an Iowa State player who did but it didn't look like he touched the ball. Keep an eye on Johnson here for Oregon. Does he ever touch the ball while he's out of bounds? No. Nope. That ball is in play. I think I think that's I think that's a clean play and going to be Iowa State's ball. And clearly Walling was in bounds the whole time, so that should all be confirmed. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. First down, Iowa State. Dave Smith, our referee, the SEC crew confirms it. So now remember though. Oregon fumbled the ball earlier and Iowa and Iowa State was stopped. Oregon did a great job stopping and then they went 98 yards the other way. So let's see if the defense can stand tall here again after another turnover. 
You mentioned Dave Smith, the SEC crew. Dave Smith, former Alabama quarterback, who is a uh, refereeing the game. I'm sure is uh, thrilled with uh, the Tide winning last night and advancing to the national championship game presented by AT&T Monday, January 11th. Just looking for reasons, aren't you? Well, I had to mention it. I didn't say who they beat. You mentioned it quite a bit, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Play action here, Purdy, as he dumps it off to Chase Allen. Clocked at the 19-yard line, but a gain of eight. It'll be Alabama and Ohio State meeting for the national championship. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, next Monday, January 11th. For the eighth straight year, we are blowing it out with mega cast coverage. Got you covered from every uh, platform, TV, radio, digital. The Buckeyes taking down Trevor Lawrence and Clemson last night. There you go. I didn't mention again who Alabama beat. Here is uh, Brees Hall. First down and more inside the 10. Heading for the pylon. He kicked the pylon, but he stepped out of bounds first at about the two-yard line. But it will be first and goal for Iowa State. So that is a planned play. Make it look like offensively it's going to the left. And then both Hall and Purdy come back to the right. You see everybody stepping left, but that's planned to go back to the right. Purdy up trying out there to get a block, trying to get in front of Brees Hall, and he definitely stepped out one and a half yard line. Excellent misdirection play for a team that normally Iowa State goes straight ahead. They like to kick out blocks with the tight ends and go straight ahead or right off tackle. That was a, a nice misdirection play. Brees Hall, 21 carries, 84 yards and a touchdown. He leads the country in rushing. He's number two in rushing touchdowns with 20 and a timeout by Iowa, Iowa State, State here. They're yeah. first. Play Eight. clock was a 30 two. 30-second timeout. Well, Tuesday at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on ESPN and the app. It's the 86th annual Heisman Trophy ceremony presented by Nissan, the first ever virtual presentation. Brees Hall, a candidate, right. but not one of the four finalists. It's Mac Jones and Devontae Smith from Alabama, Trevor Lawrence, and Kyle Trask of Florida. So normally this award is a quarterback award, and I, I've listen, said over the years I kind of have an issue with that. But... You really, if you're a non-quarterback, you have to have that otherworldly type of year. As far as I'm concerned, Devontae Smith had that for Alabama. What he is doing this year, now Brees Hall had a phenomenal year, and, and the accolades he got, well-deserved. But unfortunately, he's not one of the final four for the Heisman. I think Devontae Smith should win the Heisman. I know all the votes were cast already before yesterday, but Devontae Smith was oh, uh, incredible yes. yesterday. Yes, he was. No, first and goal for Iowa State, leading by seven late in the second quarter. Brees Hall again into the end zone. Touchdown, Iowa State. Little extracurricular activity, but it subsides quickly as Hall hits Pater from a yard out. Oregon had some success stopping that last time around. I wouldn't be surprised if that old line is saying, hey, let's go straight ahead. You know, they got us last time there. We need to redeem ourselves up front a little bit. And they were able to do that. Straight ahead again, nothing fancy. And that, he was hit before the, the goal line, but just able to drive in. Happy mom for a young man who has just had a fantastic season. 21 rushing touchdowns now for Brees Hall. And the extra point makes it 28-14. Run to Taco Bell. And Brees Hall, guy that was not highly recruited, just a sophomore, and he's become one of the best players in the country. Eight 100 yard games. That's tops in the country. He's about to get his ninth. As I said, six in the Heisman. The only one Iowa State finished better was Troy Davis in 96, was the runner up. Well, his mom, LaRonda McDaniel, is here, and she's a uh, flight attendant for Delta, who all during his childhood would give him quotes. Before he'd go to school, drop, she'd, she'd drop him off, breeze off, give him a quote. Constantly quotes. And so when he was recruited by Matt Camp, a guy who likes quotes, he likes leadership, I think they formed a, a certain bond. And watching Brees in, in person, I got to tell you, it's a little more impressive than watching him on tape. You mentioned the patience, the vision, the burst. 
the bounce. He makes it look so easy. Brees Hall. Good stuff, Quinn. Let's see if Nettles pops it up again. DJ Johnson is not in there, the guy that. Uh, Tyler Nanny now. But it's kicked deep. And taken on the 11-yard line by Hudson. Good coverage, though, on kickoff there by Iowa State. See what the Ducks do here with two timeouts, a minute 23 to go. Jared Russ was down there for the Cyclones. College Football Playoff Foundation is the largest sports entity supporting education in America. This year, college football went big to show support for educators, recognizing the hard work, long hours, and dedication to their students. ESPN is proud to continue to support the CFP Foundation. Together with conferences, schools, and bowl games, thousands of teachers have been directly impacted by the joint effort. For more about Extra Yard for teachers, go to CFP Extra Yard. We do have Anthony Brown back in the game with a minute 23 to go in the half. And Brown to throw, and it's Habibi Likio on the screen. And he's got the first down and more. Hurdles a man, and out of bounds near midfield. So a ton of time. They still have two timeouts, and a gain of about 25 yards there on the first play of the possession. Likio is a guy they normally see around the red zone here. A nice call with the screen on first and 10. Well called. Well executed, getting again the lineman out front. Great position, plenty of time. Oh, movement though. That's going to cost him. 77 offense, five yard penalty. First down. George Moore. First Extra year granted this year. So, minute 14. You have a couple of timeouts. Clock stops on first downs, plenty of time. You still have the entire field to work with. By the way, I believe it was about three and a half minutes left when I said it was the fastest half. Yeah, it slowed it was, down. Yeah, 35 yeah. minutes ago. Way to jinx us. Here's a Brown to the air again, and a pass that is on target, and what a catch. He got a foot down. Man, Johnny Johnson was getting leveled, but he stuck that foot down, hit green before he was knocked out of bounds at the 39-yard line. Wow. I did not think he was going to get a foot down. Oh, wow, there's a toe tapper. What a fantastic job. And now they stop it. I mean, They're trying to snap it, but Jalen Red couldn't get lined up. I, I think he was in, though. I do think he yeah, was in. I agree. I actually think they were more upset that maybe they had something they liked there in terms of a play call, and, and Jalen Red wasn't set up correctly. A couple players were yelling at each other there. But I agree with you. I think Johnny Johnson got that down. He's a local kid from Chandler. The previous play is under further review. The ruling on the field was a completion. Johnson went to Chandler High School. Mm -hmm. And uh, in his return to the area against Arizona State last year, he had 10 catches, two touchdowns at Sun Devil Stadium. Came into the game with 110 career catches. That looks like another one to me. I see green in front of that toe. Yep. He's caught a pass in 38 of his 46 games here at Oregon. Let me tell you what, that that toe tap, and when you look at that in, in real speed, that's a man that's taken a dance class or two in his life. <laughs> that was impressive. Look at that. A pretty good throw, too. I mean, again, it Tyler was. Tyler Shuck went three of three on that first drive, and you know, Anthony Brown's come on and obviously got the two rushing touchdowns, but he's been sharp throwing it, too. And you're right where he put that ball. He put that ball up high. Either his guy was getting it or nobody was getting it. You know, he's throwing the ball around well. One thing we haven't seen, we haven't seen much pressure from Iowa State. 28 sacks on the year. Right, Will McDonald, uh, who has yeah. nine and a half. Jaquan Bailey, who has seven. We haven't called either After name. After further review, the ruling of a completion is confirmed. First down, Oregon. Now, they get rid of the ball so quickly, too, right? They it's do. Hard to get that kind of pressure. Maybe that's why they're getting rid of it quickly. So first down on the 39 with 1.10 to go here in the half and two timeouts remaining for Oregon. Trailing 28-14. Brown will take off 
here, and he's inside the 35. Drags a defender with him down to the 31. That was Mike Rose, outstanding linebacker for Iowa State, but tackle was made eight yards downfield. So the clock still runs. Not going to not going to waste the time out here. I don't think they should. Keep those two. Brown will throw it on second and two, and the pass is caught. It's a first down grab, Kent Moyer. So the clock stops, 43 seconds to go. Their uh, kicker, Henry Cattleman, by the way, has only attempted three. Again, they played only six games. His long on the season is 40, so keep that in mind as they're down here. Like the play calling of Joe Moorhead and how he's, what he's having Anthony Brown do, the safe runs, the out passes. Brown with time, taking a shot downfield, oh, where it's caught, wow. Pittman, touchdown, Oregon. Penalty Holding. flag in the backfield. Number 74 oh. on the offense, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot, replay, first down. Stephen Jones with the holding call that costs Oregon points. Just as I said, safer passes and runs. Here he goes, a nice back shoulder, deep show, a deep throw. Daytron Young was the man in coverage, but a really nice job on the throw and catch. Unfortunately, all for naught. Look at the placement of the ball. Again, he, there's good coverage there, but you see the throw is going back shoulder and underneath. So take the points off the board. Now it's first and 20 with 38 seconds to go. Still two timeouts remaining for Oregon. Brown going downfield. There were two yeah. receivers in the same spot, Pittman and Campmoyer. Second and 10. He had a BB Leakio out of the backfield. That's where he should have gone. I mean, wide open. Whenever two receivers are going in the same area, as you mentioned, that's not to, that right there is not supposed to happen. But he wanted to go down the field there. He wanted so in my estimation got a little bit greedy there trying to go downfield when he had a wide open back out of the backfield. So second down at 20 grad transfer quarterback Anthony Brown the rest of the roster is underclassmen they've got the youngest team in college football pressure coming Brown gets it away it's caught at the 30 yard line Williams wrapped up at the 29 they got to use one of the timeouts here and they will stop at the clock with 25 seconds left Oregon their second this will be a 30 second timeout so it'll be third down here for Oregon with 25 seconds remaining Iowa State's defense has been really good all year. They got a great coach in John Haycock. You know, John has been moved. Every time we talk to him, he's really moved by the story of Jack Trice. The, the stadium is named after Jack, who is the first black student athlete ever at Iowa State, who died from injuries suffered in a game in 1923. This is a letter he wrote, uh, Jack did, from the Curtis Hotel in Minneapolis before his last college game and it's a letter that will be read by John Haycock to his defense. Yeah this was uh, a, the game is second college game and he died from the injury sustained in that game. This letter is on the front of every defensive playbook that Iowa State player gets just as a reminder all the time and and John Haycock says every Friday we look at that letter we read that letter we talk about that said that that memory lives in all these Iowa State players. He gets very emotional about it. Here's Brown on third down. Oh, Deep ball got a receiver open in the end zone, but he was out of bounds. Devin Williams was led out of bounds by that throw from Anthony Brown. Now it's fourth down, and they're going to have to bring on the field goal unit. So you wonder if the pressure on Brown caused the ball to be go awry a little bit because he had a wide open receiver. Now it really shouldn't have. I mean that that should that pressure it came from around behind him in the side and behind should not have affected that throw that that should have been an easy touchdown. Boy, that was one I'm sure as soon as he let go wanted back. Will McDonald had the pressure and now a 47 yard attempt again Cattleman barely kicked it all this year is just his fourth attempt. He's a sophomore played soccer in high school didn't even kick a football in competitive action. Kick is good, but I the think game. 
Oh yeah, whistle blew. Delay a game. Oh Terrible my gosh. penalty to have there. Wow. I thought Iowa State I, maybe called the time. Oh, I, I did as well to try and freeze him. Let's see. Prior to the delay of game, timeout, Oregon. Oregon Their third okay, and final timeout. timeout of the half. So this they will be saw a thirty-second timeout. Mario Cristobal recognizing well, there was only a second left, so he called it. That's good because what this is going to be a forty-seven yarder. His longest was forty yards. He said he hasn't kicked much. It was a forty yards in that Pac-12 championship game against USC. So not a lot of kicks. This is further than his long kick. And as you mentioned, he played soccer in high school and didn't play football, didn't kick a ball. Redshirted in, in, uh, in 2018. He didn't play at all last year. Now, now Iowa State Iowa takes State. a timeout. Timeout, <laughs> Iowa State. I have no idea if this works. I mean, I, I, I've never seen a study done on Number of times a timeout has been called to freeze. I'd like to see that. Could somebody do that for me quickly? How quickly could we get well, that? You, you Over the last 10 years, I'd like. Didn't you play in the Bounty Bowl against the Cowboys way back when? Yes, I did. We don't use that term, but yes. Yes, I did. <laughs> Luis Endejas was the kicker. Yes, yes, now, did, did that freeze the kicker, the, 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 the bounties? We well, got froze on the kick, that's for sure, <laughs> or on the hit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, yeah, what's the term we would use if we didn't call it the uh, bounty ball? Was that 87? Is yeah, you, my memory kick? You call it the bounty okay. ball. That's pretty much <laughs> it's the way for everybody to remember. I mean, it. Back then, that got celebrated. Coaches now get fired. Yes, of, they of do. Those things. That's exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> Happen more places than you think. Well, I can imagine. I can't wait. I, I think you probably already have a book or books, but I don't know if you got one in the Eagles history. I think I'd love that one. Oh, he got it. Oh. 47 wow. yards out. It's perfect from Cattleman. Put that in the column of freeze didn't work. What a great job. Some high pressure there to get some points right before half. I mean, it's one thing, too, you nail it about a minute and a half ago, but because of the timeout by Oregon, then the timeout by Iowa State. You got to wait. And he does the yep. same thing right down Main Street. Well, if we need it a little later, more, we, we kind of know the distance. That was a 47 yarder. I'd give him maybe a couple more yards. That's about it. So, what a great, great job We're finding his range. So, 13 seconds left. Dave Pash, Mike Golick upstairs, and Quinn Kesnick down on the field. Uh, for Oregon, what has to change, you think, well, in the second half? So, good job there getting points. They get the ball in the second half. Yep. Again, we'll be interested who comes out of quarterback. Mm -hmm. And then, j just, listen, you have plenty of time. You know, you have plenty of time to get back there. You don't have to go out of your defense, out, out of your offense at all. Run your play, still stay in your offense. The defense is going to have, we've seen them make some starts, but they're going to have to be more, a little more consistent in their stops on Iowa State, not let them have these long drives to, to hang on to the ball. We continue to see fly balls on kickoffs. And it was pulled in that time by Hanukkah, so Iowa State's going to have the ball on its 25-yard line with 13 seconds left. Yeah, I'm going to say we're going to get a one play here, and that'll be it. I don't think Iowa State's going to try and do any more than that at this point. They'll go on with the 28-17 lead, Iowa with the ball, and, and I, I'll be, I'm going to be very interested how they come out offensively with who, who's going to be running the show. 11-point lead for Iowa State. Could be more. Oregon had the stop on the goal line and fourth down. So Purdy and his homecoming grew up in Gilbert, Arizona with a great first half, a touchdown pass, a touchdown run. And that's the end of the first half here with Oregon, as you mentioned, getting the ball to start the second half. Stay tuned, the halftime report with Matt Berry, Joey Galloway, and Jesse Palmer coming up after these messages. Iowa State 28, Oregon 17. You're watching the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl.
Welcome back to the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl. Brock Purdy in his homecoming with a touchdown pass. Also a touchdown run as we look at our PlayStation first half stats. How about Iowa State had the ball for over 21 minutes and ran double the plays. Well, that is, that is something they control so much of it. But Oregon had that big 98-yard drive. I'm going to be real interested again who starts out at quarterback and the first drive here if they can get back in this game. Let's bring in uh, Quinn Kesnick from the field. Well, talking to Matt Campbell after that first half performance, you, you think that they were down by seven. I mean, no punts. As you guys said, 21 minutes of possession, 47 plays. Ever the perfectionist, he was bemoaning the fact that they could not score uh, when they were up against the goal line. Meanwhile, Mario Cristobal, you will see both quarterbacks here in the third quarter as basically the audition for 2021 continues for the Oregon Ducks at the quarterback position. Yeah, Tyler Shuckwin started the game and did well. Was three of three, led the team down the field for a touchdown, but Anthony Brown came in after that and was in the rest of the way. But again, they had the ball for just eight and a half minutes. So do we get another mortar kick here? Or they actually boot it downfield. It's going to be Hudson from the seven yard line. He's past the 25 and out near the 30. It's going to be Anthony Brown at quarterback for Oregon to start the second half. Brad transfer from Boston College. Say again, a three year starter at Boston College, 40 touchdowns, so he has the experience here. Running in for a touchdown, he's made some very, very accurate throws, and he has an extremely strong arm to get the ball where it needs to go. So he can show he can do it with his arms and his legs, which he did in the Pac-12 championship game, but from the red zone area, not from the field, like he's getting a much more opportunity today. As the two rushing scores and 122 passing yards, he'll throw it here on first down. He's got Jalen Red. Oh, and if Red could have broken that tackle, he would have scored. So Ishim Young probably saves a touchdown. As it is, play that goes for 18 yards. So they're going to start off this half up tempo. Quick little ball fake there on the run, slant. Like I said, he gets it there in a hurry. Brown off play action, rolling out to his right, throwing to the second level. It was juggled and incomplete. As uh, Micah Pittman could not come up with that on the sideline. Oregon uh, won the Pac-12 championship, as you may recall, got into the Pac-12 title game because Washington, which won the division, had COVID issues, so Oregon was a replacement. They were going to play Colorado right. in Los Angeles just in case they were needed to play USC, which ended up happening it was announced early that week that they would replace Washington they ended up beating the Trojans to get here had a lot of opt outs certainly had the talent coming into the year to uh, win the Pac-12 championship as die gets about three or four and, and this is what they were working with this year we I talked at the beginning about all the opt outs their 110 man roster 81 are true freshmen redshirt freshmen or sophomore that's 74 percent underclassmen they are the youngest team in the nation so a lot to build on here and they may be doing it with a grad transfer quarterback because we as we can start to talk out remember everybody can come back next year so is this a situation where Anthony Brown getting the time and if he's shining well will he will he want to do something like that wide receiver screen to red and Iowa State is all over it he loses a yard Mike Rose read that beautifully so it's fourth down and we're going to have our first punt of the game by either team. Oh, I'm happy for the families of the punters. You know, they get to see their kid do something. You know, Tom Snee's parents are watching from Australia. He's from Melbourne. But just to finish up on Oregon, they locked up their head coach, too. So you talk about guys that might come back in terms of the players. Their head coach, Will Mario Cristobal, signing a six year. 27 million dollar deal to stay with the Ducks. That's big. And that lands in the end zone. So long punt, but the net not very good as it goes into the end zone for a touchback. Two minutes gone by in the third quarter here in beautiful Arizona. Ago that Mike Golick joined ESPN, did everything from being NFL studio analyst to 
Monday Night Football, of course, long partnership with Mike Greenberg. Mike and Mike, which went 18 years. You get your son, Mike Golick Jr. now, who's an excellent broadcaster in both radio and calling games. Mike's in the Broadcasting Hall of Fame, National Radio Hall of Fame, the USA Wrestling Hall of Fame, as well as we welcome you back to the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl. You're in the Pantheon, Mike. ESPN would not be where it is today without your contributions. Well, I, I appreciate that, Dave, very much. And I, I really enjoy working with you with finally face-to-face. -face. And I, I guess what that just shows is I, I fooled a lot of people over the years. Huh? <laughs> I fooled them all into giving me all that stuff. I appreciate it. it it's, it's been an incredible time. I, I've, I've loved the time, and, I, and I've loved having my family involved. To me, you know, as we see uh, Brees Hall with the rush gain in about six yards, that's been the most important thing. While I've made many great friends, it's it's to be able to have my family so involved. Oh, look at that! I got a cake. The Fiesta Bowl thanks you. Look at that. That's from Spirit. There's Thank you, Spirit. Spirit getting the shot. Wow, that is really nice. Thank you very much. They know apparently the way to your heart, Mike. Oh, don't drop it. Hmm. <laughs> I'm good. Normally I'd ask for a bite, but in the uh, era no. of COVID, I'm not going to uh, share there. it now. <laughs> oh, this is fantastic. But congratulations Thank on, on, on a great run, Mike. I appreciate all, that very much. All the things you've done. I, I'm very happy. I'm not going to lie to be back in the booth this year and doing something I love to do so much in calling college games. It's just such a joy to do. Got to do it actually with my son, Mike, a couple of times. So it's been great. So thank you very much. They're down and four. Brock Purdy passes over the middle. Hutchinson able to break a tackle and get the first down. So Oregon fails to get Hutchinson to the ground, and that moves the sticks for the Cyclones. It's a nice play. And again, I've said this earlier about them. They're very content. Ten yards, get ten and a half. Keep it going. That's why they had the ball for over 21 minutes in the first half. I have icing all over my face. <laughs> It's the only thing I'm very proud of is I have passed that on to my family when they've been on air with me. They all eat on camera as well, so I feel very, very proud about that. <laughs> Purdy's going to hand it off here to Nwongu, and a nice run on first down, a gain of nine. Well, you mentioned your family, and here they are back when you started the ESPN to where everybody is today. Wow, that, that is incredible. A lot more gray hair. A few more people added with my daughter-in-law, Jenny, and my future son-in-law, Ben, in there, as well as our couple of pugs. Wow, everybody's aged well, except I got a lot of gray now, though I am going for the Moses look. I like it. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's good, I though. That. It's flirted with the Dos Equis man. Trying to get that look and <laughs> move to the Moses look. Hand off Nuwongo gets the first down. You've been doing this so long. I, I, I think, you know, back when you were doing arena football, the guy that uh, helped a team that plays in the stadium get to the Super Bowl was playing in the arena football league, Kurt Warner. And you Kurt were doing Warner. I was games, doing first right? games. That's where I first got to know Kurt. Mike Adamley and I were doing the games. And Kurt Warner and I became very friendly, played for the Iowa Barnstormers. I made a whole lot of trips to Des Moines. Enjoyed myself there very, very much. But uh, I love calling arena games, love calling these college games. I mean, it's just so much fun watching, watching these players play and do their thing. Well, Des Moines is where you're flying to to get the, to get the aim. Yep. As Nuongo off the right side picks up about nine yards to the 45. I thought yesterday was a great example when we had Zoom calls with these coaches and players and how they all related, Mike, to the connection they had with you. Whether it was the oldest coach or the youngest player we talked to, they all had a story about listening to your show. And I think about me listening to Mike and Mike in my basement working out or in the car or in the garage working on the, the lawnmower and, and how you've become such a, a, a part of the fabric of, of the American sports culture and how people, you've become such a part of their lives. And, and we really felt that from the players and coaches yesterday. Yeah, well, I appreciate that Quinn, very much. I mean, that's that's why I, I wanted to do things. I just wanted to kind of be that guy that you're just hanging out with, having a conversation. And, you know, hey, here's my family, too. They like to be in the conversation and, you know, just hang out. And uh, that's what I tried to do for a couple of decades. And though when the Verone McKinley's from Oregon, the defensive back, says, you know, I watched you when I was in middle school, that's, that always gets me a little bit. <laughs> it really, really sets things in stone. 
Purdy backing up and throwing it to Hutchinson. Well covered by D.D. Lenore. How about Andy Avalos, the defensive coordinator for Oregon? He was, he was legit mad. He, he said, my, my routine is messed up. Yeah. Because you're not on the morning. I'm so used to listening to you in the Driving morning. Driving in, yeah. And he got up early, obviously, yeah, on the yeah, West Coast there with the morning show. Yeah. Going to be interesting to see what happens next with Andy because uh, the Boise State head coaching position is open with Brian Harson going to Auburn. And, you know, Andy being an all time great player oh, there. Fantastic linebacker there. Three years in a row, I believe, led the team in tackles. Second and ten from the port uh, from the 40. Here is a wide receiver screen Hutchinson and this time the Ducks wrap him up. McKinley was there first and Thibodeau downfield as well for Oregon. That's a defensive coordinator's favorite thing to do in practice is called pursuit drill. Every you practice it you throw the ball out wide and all 11 hats have to get to the ball and you just saw that there. Perfect example of it by Oregon. And you're right with Andy. It's basically hit between him and Kellen Moore. Uh, you know, uh, uh, with uh, with yep. the Cowboys. Yes who played at Boise State and Andy and I asked him I said you know your business whether you take the job or not I said but I'm sure you had to talk to the players and he said yeah in this day and age players hear those things and they asked him questions and he sat him down and he he was very upfront with all of them and, and that's that's the biggest thing to me is coaches being upfront with your players. Purdy on third down and long in trouble breaks a tackle and then is tracked down from behind up on Jordan Scott the big man. Jordan Scott, 6'1", 3'11", 41 starts. That's the most in the Pac-12. And he gets a great push here. They all do. He ends up cleaning up at the end by hustling. Continue to hustle. Break to the ball. And the big man pays off because of the hustle. And now we're seeing Iowa State's first punt. That's a big stop by Oregon, trailing by 11. But again, Iowa State taking a ton of time off the clock. They've had the ball for almost 27 minutes to about 10 uh, for Oregon. Delgado in traffic oh, that hit no. an Oregon player. That looked like it hit Mikhail Wright, and it's recovered by Iowa State. Gary Vaughn recovers it after it hit the helmet of Wright. Well, this is the old spatial awareness when you're on the return team and you're trying to block a guy and you end up getting away. It glanced right off the back of his helmet. He's, he's worrying about the guy he's supposed to be blocking, losing the sense. The field was, the ball touched the Oregon player and then was recovered by the kicking team. First down to Iowa State. This is more common than you think. You really have to have that spatial awareness of when you're trying to block up uh, someone on the punt team coming down of where you are in relation because those punt team guys are coming down to where the ball carrier is. So you're naturally going to where the returner is going to be. And that time just too close caught him off a helmet. Oregon now put in a tough situation again. Third turnover. In, in this one again, two have been deep in the territory for Iowa State. Though the first time it happened, Oregon did stop them on a fourth and one. Right, but you have the fumble. You have uh, the kickoff near the end of the half right. that uh, T.J. Timeout. Johnson couldn't handle. Oregon, they're first. Boy, Oregon has to use a timeout too. So you burn a timeout as well that you might need trying to come from behind late in the game. Iowa State's going to have the ball at the 14 of Oregon. You're watching PlayStation Fiesta Bowl. Ohio State. The national championship game, Monday, January 11th on ESPN. So here's what happened towards the end of the first half and a great kickoff that DJ Johnson had trouble handling. It was recovered by Iowa State's Rory Walling, and then the Cyclone scored a touchdown. Moments ago, Mikhail Wright doesn't see the ball, hits his helmet. Delgado, the return man, was trying to chase after it, but Cyclones recover that ball as well at the 14-yard line, already with an 11-point lead midway through the third quarter. Brees Hall with 24 carries already on the day. This is 25 for the nation's leading rusher. He's down to the 10 yard line, closing in on another 100 yard day. The only game this year 
he didn't have over 100 was the Big 12 title game against Oklahoma was held to 79 but he still scored two touchdowns in that game. I mean, you, you, you look at them now 152 yards rushing 136 passing 26 minutes time of possession. And this this is Iowa State football and then you'll get him to bust one. That's why he led the nation in rushing. He'll break one and go the distance. Going to be tough to win the Doak Walker with the Travis Etienne and Najee Harris, but still a great year. And Oregon with a great play. Wow, Thibodeau read that perfectly to take down Tariq Milton. And it's a loss on the play of about five. It, it, what, what a great job here. What I like, watch, watch how he stays disciplined. That's what I like the most. Be a disciplined player. Stays home right where he's supposed to be. Doesn't go for the fake, doesn't go the way the flow's going. He says, my teammates will handle that. I'm going to play my responsibility. And he's athletic enough to make the open field tackle. It's a little curious there with that, you know, jet sweep, little trick play. Things are going so well, yeah. just running the ball uh, straight I mean, ahead. I'm with you. I'm with you. They usually don't do a whole lot of fancy stuff, and the time it didn't go well. So Purdy on third down and 12 in trouble, trying to dump it off. It's overthrown. Jarrell Brock, the intended receiver, so Oregon's defense is off the field. It's fourth down, and Iowa State will have to send on the field goal team, so that's a win for the Ducks. Without question. Yeah, they've been put in some tough situations, and we've seen him come through a couple of times. Brandon Dorless, number 97, put the pressure on Brock Purdy that time, made him have to throw a little inaccurate because he did have a man out there. That's a that's a nice job by that Oregon defense. Blowing up. Former walk on Connor Asali senior. Now to try a field goal here. Looking to extend the lead to 14. 33 yard attempt. And it's good. So it's 31 17. Six and a half to go in the third. The PlayStation Fiesta Bowl, brought to you by Allstate. You've never been in better hands. AT&T 5G and Bolt 24. We'll advance hydration from the makers of Gatorade. You know, I was watching Ohio State last night beat a team that everybody said oh, they're not supposed to beat Clemson. I thought about this game. Now, it's different because Ohio State was ranked two, but right. Miami had all those NFL guys. They were they absolutely sure loaded. What, what a game, and everybody talks, listen, Justin Fields deserves to be talked about. His deep ball was unreal, uh, and six touchdown passes, but Trey Sermon, the running back, between the Big Ten Championship game and last night, 60 carries, 524 yards. He averaged 8.7 yards a carry in those two games. He was incredible. A defensive line for Ohio oh, State yeah. got after Clemson's O-line. Hudson on the return, makes a nice move, gets past the 35, and scoots on a play around the 40-yard line. So now up next for Ohio State is Alabama in the national championship game presented by AT&T Monday, January 11, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. And again, we'll have our mega cast coverage, 14 channels across our linear and digital platforms. CFP Live will include NFL Live members Dan Orlovsky, Marcus Spears, and Mina Kimes. Kevin Agani will host and Todd McShay will add NFL draft content. Film room, film room will involve three coaches. You can watch it, listen to it, so many different ways. Should be a great game. I'll be calling from my chair if anybody wants to listen. <laughs> so Anthony Brown still in the game of quarterback for Oregon, surveying the field here, and then throws it away as he's chased out of the pocket. I, I thought, I thought they may have given Tyler Shuck another chance here since that first drive didn't go anywhere. This is a big drive. Right? I mean, you turn the ball over, your defense holds, you do give up the field goal, but you got to start putting yourself in position to score points. I think this is going to be one of the more important drives of the game for Oregon. I mean, all the talk about, hey, we want to give Tyler every chance to regain his confidence yeah. and get a swagger back. Three well, passes. And, and he let him down the yeah. field, a touchdown yeah. drive. Hasn't, back, hasn't been back since. Don't believe there's an injury or anything as Brown zips that one in. Should have been caught, yeah. but it came out of the hands of Red incomplete. That's certainly not going to help the situation. Now you're behind the sticks. Again, we'll see if, I, uh, if Iowa State can get a rush. Will, McJo Will McDonald, Jaquan Bailey, two of the better pass rushers around.
Bailey first team. Big 12 48 starts. Let's watch the end rushers here. Pressure laid up the middle. The pass is caught by Johnson. He does not get the first down though. It's fourth and about two. Will Oregon go for it here? Six minutes to go in the third quarter. The offense is staying on the field for now. Yeah. Yeah. I would definitely think about going for this pressure that time and not from the inside. That, that, that they brought the blitz. They came straight up the gut. Oh, they are going to punt this ball. They're going to play the fail, field position here. Maybe the thought process, the Oregon defense stepped up so well last time that you try and pin them back a bit and get the defense to hold. See if you can do that. Tom Snee out there with the punt. 15 punts inside the 20 in his career. Plenty of time left, too, to, yeah. to go for it here. I mean, they've given Iowa State the short field twice already today. I don't think you want to do it a third time. Because they didn't convert on the other two as the fair catch is made by Milton at the 11. 31-17 Iowa State in front with possession. You're watching the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl. Process in taking something and making it special. That's not a short-term fix. We're here for the long haul. Looking deep. Double coverage. It's intercepted. I don't think we put any goals and expectations other than can we not be the lacking style of college football. Kick on the way. No good. Iowa State wins in Austin. This has been a really special season uh, for our program. We've never let one game define who we are. Well, a five-time national champion as a player and coach at a Division III school, Mount Union in Ohio, has become one of the top coaches in FBS. Matt Campbell led his team to its first ever top spot of the Big 12 regular season standings. They lost in the Big 12 championship game, though, to Oklahoma. If they win nine games, it will tie the school record. It'll be just the third time ever that Iowa State has accomplished that. They have a 14-point lead, first down on the 11-yard line. Nuwongu able to make the first man miss and got positive yardage. Think, think about, again, I'm going to list more things of what he's accomplished in a short time. They beat Oklahoma and Texas in the regular season in the same year for the first time in school history. Winning season four straight years, first time in school history. That led to the 17 seniors having the most prolific four-year period in school history at 31 wins. Since, nine, since 2017, they've been beaten by 14 only twice. One at the end of last year in the bowl game against Notre Dame and the first game of this season against Louisiana. All the other games have been closer than that. Has absolutely turned this program around. Purdy on second down and seven backpedaling and throws it away. Will be interesting as well, the Texas job was filled today. You see what else happens here. Campbell obviously is going to get interest. He's going to get interest from yeah. the NFL. Don't know if that's something that he's interested in, but right, with right. you know Matt Rule and Cliff Kingsbury getting opportunities, you're seeing it more and more because the game in the NFL is a lot more like the college Yes, it game. is. And I know Iowa State fans right now are telling us to be quiet and don't do this, but this is the reality. When you come in, you're successful. You're young. You're successful. You turn a program around. I mean, just follow Matt Rule from Temple to Baylor, now in the NFL. Again, I'm not saying that's what's going to happen here with Matt Campbell, but it's the reality of coaching now. Your name becomes a hot name, and people are interested. Flag down might be a free play. Oregon looked offside, and Purdy dumps it off. They get the first down with Brock anyway. Out to the 27-yard line. There, I think it's a second flag down. There is. The it, was, it was holding on, on, on Ramos, the right tackle, okay. 76. So let's see, if it was offsides against Oregon, it'll be, it'll be offsetting. Unless there was an alignment issue with Iowa State as well. There were two fouls on the play, one by each team, offside on the defense, number 97, holding on the offense, number 76. Those fouls offset, replay third down. So again, Oregon, you saw the flag come after the snap so somebody the jumper lined up off sides and watch the right side there's a jump on the right side 76 as he turns the corner Thibodeau turns the corner he just grabs and pulls him to the ground 
point. Tip, Thibodeau has that speed to really turn the corner. You really got to have some good steps as a tackle. You know, that 45 degree kick step. You've got to get out there and try not to open those shoulders up and give that give that speedy rusher like Thibodeau the, the ability to turn the corner. You see how quickly too he gets off off the ground. Oh, God. Goes, right, yeah. goes right back into the fray. Third down and long. They bring pressure. Purdy gets the pass away deep, incomplete. There was some contact, but ball was way overthrown, intended for Kohler. So it's fourth down, and Oregon's going to get it back. Starting to see a little heat from Oregon, uh, getting the pass rush on the outside, or, or coming up the, the middle as well. Putting Purdy and, and Purdy backpedal a little bit when he throws the ball, not able to set. So the accuracy is off. So this Oregon defense, David, nothing else. They are giving their offense a f more than a few chances. The offense has got to start taking advantage of it. Makes it even more interesting decision now for the coaching staff who to put in a quarterback. Yep. Line drive punt. Delgado fields it at the 38-yard line. And good coverage downfield by Iowa State. Landon Akers was there first. NFL Wild Card Weekend, January 9th and 10th. We are blowing out our broadcast with megacast coverage. ESPN, the ESPN Deportes, ABC, and the app. ESPN2 Freeform have their own unique telecast. Match of day and time determined after tomorrow games. We've got a pair of triple headers now for Wild Card Weekend. Always have to love when the last week of the season comes down to win in, lose, you go home. So much riding on it. And with teams, you know, like the Rams, where golf is out, where Cup is out, you know, as receiver, playing against uh, uh, the, the um, Cardinals, where Kyler Murray is going to be playing. Yeah, he's fine. Got hit late last week in the leg, but he's fine. And uh, die here on first down for Oregon out to 48 yard line gain of five on the play. So Tyler Shuck is back in, going to get a chance now. Let's see if the hometown kid can lead a comeback. We've talked about how both of these quarterbacks are from the area. Shuck only led him to a touchdown drive early, but Brown took it in the red zone. He's been three for throwing, he had th thrown three passes, completing them all. Second down and five. Chuck hands it off for Die again here. Grabbed at the ankles by Datron Young, coming up a couple of yards shy of the line to gain. Here was the quote by offense coordinator Joe Moorhead about getting Tyler Shuck to play with confidence again. He told us yesterday, want him to have that swagger back. He's going to come off the field here, interestingly, on third down and two. They're sending Anthony Brown back into the game at quarterback. So you look for a handoff or you look for a quarterback power where the receiver, where the running back will lead the quarterback. And he keeps it. And Brown able to make the necessary man miss and get the first down. He got the ball ball strip. Yep. again at the 43-yard line. <sighs> This is so tough, Dave, because I get it. Here's, here's Brown. He's running. He's running well. And, and you just want to keep going. Right? He, but he got the first down. He's got a lot of guys on him, a lot of guys bringing him down. But you want to keep going and keep going. There, there's part of you that says, you, and, and they lost the ball. It's Iowa State's ball. It's he continues to run as he's getting tackled. And your mind says, yes, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep running. I want to get more yards. But there's another part of you, if he looks like he's a little bit of pain coming off the field. See, he makes a nice move here. He's got the first down. Now he's got one, two. All right, go down. Another three guys, so go down there. And they rip the ball out. And here's the problem. Orion Vance with the recovery, but... And you couldn't tell. You see the ball there. When did it get knocked out? So let's see if we can see here. On the play. You can't, you can't tell, and they called it a fumble on the field. So unless we can see a replay, the that's play just different. Under further review, the ruling on the field was a fumble recovered by Iowa State. And you got to have a shot where you can see the yep. ball clearly yep. in his possession. They could piece it together, but if there isn't a shot of him still in possession of the ball where you can clearly see the ball, they're not going to overturn this. Right now, all of these we're seeing is back, so we're not going to be able to tell. And, and you're right that the the way they can do it is they, have, they can have like the quad box, like four pictures. Let's see here. You really can't tell there either. That's going to be really, really tough to, to overturn. All right, let's bring in Rogers Redding. Rogers, give me your thoughts. Uh, Dave, you and Mike are right on this. You really can't tell. I think this is one of those situations where whatever is called on the field, that's got to be what it is because there's no look that says he's down, but you lose sight of the ball. And so I'm sure this will be 
uh, at, at least stands. Yeah. And, and called. And again, there's the difference there, Rogers. Explain that. Stands and confirmed. Stands means correct that they couldn't find enough evidence to overturn right. it. Where confirm would be they could. That's right. In order to. In order to confirm or overturn, you got to have what's called indisputable video evidence. What I like to say is no doubt. And, and, and there's it, no way on this play, in my view, that you could see that. So this is going to stand. Yeah, that actually, that, that shot right there did look like it was, it was out. Yeah, it did. This would but, be the fourth, fourth turnover. Again, putting the Oregon defense in a tough spot. Right, the muffed punt, two lost fumbles, and then he also had the muffed kickoff late at the first half. But watch here at the end, right so by number 35 for Iowa his State. Knee is right. down there. Well, but the ball, see the, the ball, ball right there? Yeah. But again, it was ruled down the field yeah, that it was yeah. a fumble. Not going to change. Stands is going to be. After further review, the ruling on the field of a fumble stands. First down, Iowa State. I mean, right, listen, Iowa State's done a really good job controlling the ball and the clock almost 30 minutes to 13 minutes, but Oregon is not doing themselves any favors at all. They, they, they have been, in, in a lot of cases, their own worst enemy out here and putting a whole lot on the backs of this defense. Hey, Iowa State with 10 points off of the first two turnovers and again Oregon's only had the ball for 13 minutes Iowa State's had it for 30 runs 63 plays leads by 14 and normally David has been the other way in the last 20 games Oregon has forced 34 turnovers and has scored 9.2 points off the turnovers that's second in the nation only behind Alabama but it's been reversed today so the Cyclones take over on their 43 yard line Brock Purdy's going to keep it here, and he gets popped at the point of attack by Mace Funas, or so a short game there, a gain there for the junior quarterback from Gilbert who went to Perry High School. His brother Chuba plays quarterback at Florida State. His dad, Sean, a longtime minor league baseball player for moving and settling here in Arizona. And Brock just turned 21 years old this week. Well, Oregon got guys running on and off the field. They are really out of sync here. I thought Iowa State was going to snap that ball. and They could have really caught him. Now they're changing up the play. I, I, I'm still ready thinking Brock Purdy is going to take a shot at some point in this game. Gives it to Hall here and tackled by Thibodeau at the 48 to pick up a four. So big third down here for the Oregon defense. They get a first down. If they get themselves in a position like a second and three or less, I, I, I really think they'll, they'll take that shot. Purdy loves to go deep to either Xavier Hutchison or Sean Shaw again with the height advantage here. But this, they'll do enough to move the sticks, whether it's to Hall, whether it's to the crossing linebackers or, or the crossing tight ends. Brees Hall's over 100 rushing yards now. Purdy has thrown for 131 and a touchdown. He'll throw it here on third down, gets the pass away. Milton with the catch, wrapped up and thrown down. What closing speed. Jamal Hill made the stop. It's fourth down and three. Will Iowa State go for it here, or will Matt Campbell elect to kick it, and they oh, will I, kick yeah, it? I think he'll definitely kick it. Jamal Hill, we, we saw him make one against Saner, the tight end by the goal line, to save a, a touchdown on that particular play. Great closing speed. Great open field tackle. Honorable mention all Pac-12 this year. He had a couple of interceptions in the Pac-12 championship game against USC. His first career start was this year against Stanford. Joe Rivera to punt. Delgado signaling. And the fair catch is made at the Oregon 15. Our first NBA Wednesday doubleheader of the year is coming up next week. ESPN, the ESPN app. Miami, which made it all the way to the NBA Finals last year, taking on Boston at 7.30 Eastern. Then it's the Clippers and Warriors with Steph Curry back and healthy for Golden State. Our coverage starts with NBA Countdown 7-4 Pacific. Sad news today from the world yeah. of the NBA with Paul Westfall, who was here with the Suns for a while. Uh, passed away at the age of 70. Yeah, very, very sad news there. NBA, boy, with it's so successful in the bubble, and it just seems like a couple weeks later, here we are starting the season again. 
Shuck is in and dumps it off to DJ Johnson and runs through Anthony Johnson's tackle attempt for a pickup of eight yards. So listen it's it's time for Oregon offense to do something. The defense has done a great job been put in very difficult situations and they've come up they've come through with flying colors in this. So what can the offense do. What again can the hometown kid Tyler Shuck do. He'll hand it off to die and he is driven back. <laughs> Mike Rose who's such a terrific player leading tackler all American defensive player of the year in the Big 12. He was there first on the final play of the third quarter. So Mike Rose is kind of the epitome of that guy who just doesn't get recruited by the big time schools right. And then all he does is come to a big time school and just does a fantastic job causing Arizona to have a third down and short. As they still trail in this one 31 17 important drive for Oregon when we come back to Arizona. Twilight in the Valley of the Sun aerial coverage provided by Goodyear to reach the end zone all you need is drive Goodyear more driven Dave Pash Mike Golick is checking now with Quinn Kessnick. I think sports psychologists should do a study on two quarterback systems. Does, does it ever work? We talked to Tyler Shuck this week and he says, I need to play free. I need to stop trying so hard to do too much. And then you, you look at Anthony Brown a couple series ago, trying to make the extra play and the fumble. You know, does it ever work when you know as a quarterback that one mistake will have you yanked and back on the bench? And Brown is out there. Shuck was out there on the last two downs but it is Brown for third down on a yard Habibi Likio is in the backfield with him. He's going to hand it off here Habibi Likio has got no shot. We'll see now on fourth down if this is just an automatic punt. It was Hummel that was there and along with Vance. These linebackers for Iowa State again we talked about led by Mike Rose but these other two are fine linebackers in their own right and a great job filling in there. It had worked previous times with Brown keeping the ball and that time they decide not to. So again they, they can't the, the defense comes up big after a turnover and the offense can't get anything going. A couple guys that you know, aren't the headliners as here's the punt on fourth down and short Milton's going to let it go. Couple guys on this Iowa State team that really epitomize the program. An offense, you get Landon Akers in his sixth year, and on defense, Jake Hummel, who's a first year starter but was a three year special teams warrior that finally got a chance to start and has made the most of that opportunity. And well, that's, that's, uh, you're right. It's, it's staying here, you know, in an era, and I'm not blaming people if they got, want to go in the transfer portal. I don't blame them at all if they want to do that. That's their decision. But a guy had stayed, was a backup, knew he was a backup, and finally got his chance. The 71 tackles coming into this game. His dad, his dad went to Iowa State as well, was a three time All American wrestler. Love that. Love that. So, yeah, it, it is a great story of just, he's going to a school he loves. He's not playing for a lot more special teams than anything else and he gets his chance and you know he's he's really made a count. Minute gone by here in the fourth Iowa State up 14 with the ball back and Purdy will throw. High percentage pass to Allen and he gets about nine before he's hit by Nick Pickett. Again absolute domination on the clock in this game. And Iowa State, I would imagine, though this is an area where you could try something deep, and I would imagine they would keep doing that. Brees Hall wow. in trouble in the backfield. Noah Sewell was there first, so they go back to the All-American in second and short, and a good job up front defensively by Oregon, and they lose four yards. Well, you know, you got you got to if you're this Oregon defense, you, your job is to keep getting the ball back for your offense. And as time is dwindling down, you have to you have to be the aggressor. They're starting to take some chances on these runs. Uh, they know that Brees Hall will be a patient runner, so they're taking it to them right now and recreating a line of scrimmage in the backfield and making him go east and west way more than he wants. They are 50 percent on third down, seven of 14. Oregon is 0 for five, by the way, on third down. Purdy to the air. Flag is down. At no play. Dead ball foul. Yep. It's going to be third and ten third now. Ten. For yep. Iowa State. False start on the offense. All 11 players were not set prior to the snap. Five yard penalty. Third down. All uh, 11? Uh, weren't set. I guess what he said. No, I'm not, not going to lie. I don't yeah. believe I've heard that one before. 
Yeah, it's a mistake you don't really see very often oh. from uh, Iowa State. They're so well coached. They're so fundamentally sound. They don't hurt themselves. And now third down and ten. Brock Purdy has made a lot of plays in this game. None bigger perhaps than this one here. Because boy, if you can get a first down, take another four or five minutes off the clock. Look for about an 11-yard route here. Purdy lobs it, got a man. It's caught at the 35-yard line of first down. Kohler with the catch. Well, I just say it, say it. I said 11-yard route gain of 11. Thank you. And again, the clock now 12 and a half. I mean, who knows? It may keep it. The yeah. first drive of the game went seven and a half minutes. They may Great keep pocket. it for three or four. You're absolutely right. Great pocket. Had time to step into it because we had seen him thrown off his back leg at times. Nice little inside move. Again, these the tight ends are big. They're not overly fast, but when you can make a move like that, you can wall off a defender, and the ball is put as accurately as it is with Brock there. Makes it an easy pitch and catch. So first down from the 34. Hall tripped up and keeps his balance and powers his way out to the 40-yard line. That was a great run, six yards for Brees Hall. We talked again about his predecessor, David Montgomery, third-round pick, now a 1,000-yard rusher with the Chicago Bears. Hall at some point going to be at the next level. Yep. And now you're seeing Oregon just, just you know, taking their linebackers and shooting gaps, trying to make plays behind the line of scrimmage. They're kind of in that mode right now. At that time it was Nick Wiebe. This is when, unfortunately, things can break against you when you start to become this aggressive if you get the ball past that second level. It's Hall again, and maybe a yard there. 29th carry for Hall, who's the Big 12 Offensive Player of the Year. First time for uh, uh, Iowa State players since Troy Davis back in 1996. He was an excellent college player. Oregon defense averaging giving up about 160 yards a game and Iowa State just over that right now though with all this time left there you know they're going to add to it on third and short. But even if they have the punt they took about three more minutes off the clock because of that first down. Oh, Here they go again movement move it back five. False start. On the offense, number 55, five yard penalty, third down. That was on Simmons coming up at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN, ESPN app, number five Texas AM facing North Carolina in the Capital One Orange Bowl at Hard Rock Stadium. Great year for AM. The one loss was a blowout loss to Alabama, but Alabama's been doing that to everybody. Can I just say, I don't know what the over is, but I'm taking it. <laughs> These are a couple of offenses that can put some points on the board. That's going to be fun. Third down and eight. Iowa State from its 36 yard line. Purdy to the air. In trouble. Steps up. Gets away. Tucks and runs. Thibodeau chasing him down. And he comes. Ooh, I think he got it. He Initial, got it. What, the first official stopped short of the line, but then kept going, took another step, and that's enough to move the chains. A, a huge third down conversion here for Purdy. This is all Purdy because there's some really good pressure. Another looping stunt. We've, we've seen him get up the middle with their stunts. This time Purdy escapes it. And what a great dive for the first down as again there's a flag and again illegal motion. Think about it, Mike. If he Parsons slides. Snap, false start. 17 on the offense. Five yard penalty. First down. Brock Purdy, Purdy, how smart was that, Mike? If he slides, seeing Thibodeau bearing down on him, he doesn't get the first down. Without downs a doubt. Because it's where you start the slide. Instead, he dove. Absolutely right. And that's where you're smart. You see when he runs to the middle of the field, a lot of times when a first down's not about, he feet first slide, give yourself up. This one, he knew. He knew exactly where he had to go. And let me tell you, Dave, as a defensive player, the frustration level hits you. The last two first downs they got, they got by a half a yard and a yard. That is so frustrating as a defense to say we're almost off the field and they just barely make it move the sticks on it. First and 15. Brees Hall gets another attempt. Breaks free. Into Oregon territory all the way to the 40-yard line. A 20-yard run for Hall. Well over 100 yards now on the day. So just the little stutter right as he's getting to the line of scrimmage to make sure that hole's opening up for him. And there it is right off to the right. Watch the little stutter. Finds it and gone. It's just that little center, and man, he just, then he puts his foot on the ground, and he is gone. Tight end Saner leading up through the hole again. 
Uh, you, you have to believe at this point, Dave, this defense, they've been on the field for over 36 minutes. They've got to start getting tired. And more clock being chewed up here by Iowa State with those third down conversions. From the Oregon 41. Purdy's going to throw. It's juggled and incomplete. Skates did not have possession, so incomplete. Clock stops, 9.06 to go. I'll tell you what, if you're a recruit out there and you're a tight end and you're large, you can block and you can catch some, Iowa State's a place for you. I mean, th they have to be the team that's in 13 personnel more. Or 13, again, is one back and three tight ends. 12 and 13 personnel more and I know they're doing it today because they're they're eating up the clock but this is what they do right I mean, these three tight ends are always playing see Saner there motioning into the backfield too and he's going to be the late blocker Nuwongo with a broken tackle and knocked out of bounds at the 30 yard line it's another first down Kane Nuwongo big 12 scholar athlete of the year you want to talk about a guy that's beloved on the team that's connected without, without question. And the reason we didn't replay that play is because they've run it 30 times today. And I would just be showing you the same thing over and over again. They've run twice as many plays as Oregon in this game. It's a 76th play coming up for Iowa State. 38 run by the Ducks. A clinic on time of possession. They've had it for 37 minutes. First down to the Oregon 30 yard line. And Hall able to get maybe two on his 31st rushing. Think about it, Oregon's run 38 plays. Brees Hall has run the ball himself 31 times. Listen, th this is their game plan every game to be ball control like this. But as we see the Oregon de defensive players, hands on hips, and I, I don't doubt it. I mean, I don't doubt it at all. I know they have a rotating system. We talked to the coaches about especially that front line being able to rotate. But this is just the, the disparity in time is ridiculous to I, I, I would be amazed if they weren't tight. This drive's taken six minutes and 20 seconds. They'll run it again here with Hall. And he gets maybe a yard. So a huge third down here for Oregon defense with seven and a half to go. NFL Super Wild Card Weekend, January 9th and 10th. We got mega cast coverage, ESPN, ABC, the app, free form ESPN2, ESPN Deportes. The matchup, obviously, along with the day and the time, will be determined tomorrow. A lot of games taking place tomorrow that will determine not only who gets in, but uh, the matchups in the NFC in particular. Third down and seven here for Iowa State on the 27-yard line. They go empty here with Hall leaving the backfield. Purdy over the middle to Allen, and he is tackled short of the line to gain by Nick Wiebe. So it's fourth down, and Matt Campbell might keep his offense on the field. He, no, now he said, I, I thought he may, just to try and, and keep grinding it out. But Sally is coming in the game. It probably wins you the game. You make the field yep. goals three possessions, yep. so you, you understand why he did it. The offense wanted to stay on, and they were initially, and then Campbell said, no, get out there. It's just too important to get a chance to go up 17. 39-yarder for the former walk-on. was given a scholarship before his senior year. It's perfect. So that was huge. A drive of seven and a half minutes, and then they get points to push the lead to 17. It's time now for the AT&T countdown to the CFP National Championship. Devontae Smith, three touchdown receptions against Notre Dame. And while Justin Fields threw for six touchdowns, it was Trey Sermon, 193 yards rushing in their win over Clemson. He had 330 yards, 31 yards rushing against Northwestern in the Big Ten Championship game. I love this matchup, especially in, not shockingly, Dave, because I'm looking at the line. 
that Alabama offensive line, which will probably win the Joe Moore Award as the best O line in the country, against that Ohio State D line, which was just menacing in that game against Clemson. So those are some real strength on strength matchup. That that's what I'm going to be watching in this game, the pits. Justin Fields so good last yeah. night playing through injury, but man, Alabama looked like an absolute machine as they so often do. Here's Hudson on the return for Oregon and out across the 30 yard line. So six minutes away, Iowa State in its first ever, not only Fiesta Bowl, but first New Year's Six Bowl game. Great chance to get the trophy up 17. In Fiesta Bowl, brought to you by PlayStation. Play has no limits. And Taco Bell's Nacho Fries. Number of champions have been crowned here at the Fiesta Bowl. This is the 50th Fiesta Bowl, which moved to Glendale back in 2007. And don't forget, NFL Super Wild Card Weekend is January 9th and 10th. We'll find out tomorrow the matchup. Also, the day there will be a Saturday Sunday triple header with uh, them adding a team now to each conference. So only the top seed gets a first round bye in the NFL postseason. And then there's the other side of that that you could say that uh, Trevor Lawrence may be getting ready for look for look for property down in Jackson. You would think so. Yep. Tyler Shuck back in a quarterback and Oregon down 17. Gotta work quickly here. Catch is made by Camp Moyer. And pushed out of bounds by Greg Iceworth. So Gain of only five on the play. I'm sure the defense for Iowa State will be, you know, I'm not going to say a prevent defense, but they're going to they're going to they're going to give give the short ones a little more. Shuck on second and six, going to take off here, and he's out to about the 42-yard line. What do you what do you think that drive? Home will be like for Tyler Shuck. The first time his parents, because Oregon hasn't had any fans, first time his parents have seen him play this year, and the first time they've ever seen him start because he was backing up Justin Herbert, and he's going right home after the game. He lives only about a half hour from here. Yeah, a lot of players usually after these bowl games, first and ten play. Shuck stepping up and his pass incomplete. So he he made reference to the fact that in the, how, a lot of times how it works after these games, guys will bring. You know the extra suitcase and they can fly home because everybody's getting a break after this. So since he lives here he just he said I'm driving home with my parents. He said it's going to be like Little League football again after the game driving home with my parents. And I said well if it's going to be like Little League football that means your dad's going to be in the front seat critiquing your play. So he goes I'm just going to tell him when I get in the car let's not talk about any, any, any football. You never did that to Mike or Jake right from what I from what I'm told. Not as far as you know Dave. Shuck's pass is caught. That was a good throw to Delgado inside the 40 yard line. Shuck, he was at the Fiesta Bowl as a kid eight years ago. And it was when DeAnthony Thomas took the opening kickoff back for a touchdown. He said he was he didn't even get to a seat. All of a sudden, he was an Oregon fan growing up to living here in Arizona because his mom lived uh, in Oregon for most of her life. And he missed the best play of the game, he said, by the time he got to a seat. Shuck to throw again. In trouble. And a sack. Will McDonald was there for Iowa State. Over 10 sacks now for him. Will McDonald, and again, this, this is a three man rush. They're just three man dropping eight. So he's going to come to the right side of your screen there, do the inside, then spin move to get around, and then just chases down. First team all Big Ten. I mean, what a, what a year he's had. Shock eludes pressure, long throw. Catch is made by Johnson, but dumped immediately by Young. Quick on McDonald, redshirt sophomore. As the coaches said, you know, what's the next step for him? They said it's going to be to be that every down defensive end, not just that pass rush specialist, but to come in and start playing more in every single down. He's gained some weight. He's at about 225. He was only about 200 when he came in. Set the school Time record out. for sacks this year. Iowa State, their first. He's shaking up right here. So a timeout with four minutes to go. 
this past season, the Desert Financial Advanced Double Charity Switchers for Teachers program granted $500,000 back to educators who close the standard. Well, he's won everything else this year, so not a surprise that our Capital One rewarding performance goes to Brees Hall. I mean, 32 carries. 32 carries, 129 yards, four yards to carry, a couple of touchdowns. Just an absolute workhorse. What a great capper to just an incredible year that he's had. The Fiesta Bowl record for rushing attempts is 35, so he's close to that. I don't know if we'll see him back in the game. Led the country in rushing, also 100-yard games. Now 21 rushing touchdowns, 23 total. Oregon on third down and six, and Die is not going to get it. So they have not converted on third down the entire game. That's never happened in the Fiesta Bowl. Obviously, they'll go for it on fourth down. Credit Iowa State defense. They are an aggressive bunch. We've talked a lot about the linebackers, that, that back seven, the way they play that 3-3-5. Get that extra man up in the box. You've got to be able to play the play the run and play the pass. That's I see Young who's able to do that. Here's Shuck on fourth and four. This oh. pass is intercepted by Mike Rose. The fifth interception for Rose, who led the Big 12 in that category. And Iowa State going to win it. Mike Rose was also tied for first amongst linebackers with four interceptions in the nation. He may have just broken that tie. So we just talked about the great player on offense for Iowa State and Grace Hall. And now we talk about the player that leads them on defense. Mike Rose, your backer. Good thing he caught it because it would have hit him square in the face if he didn't. <laughs> Everybody loving that one. Matt Campbell especially. Some happy times on that sideline. Back at the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl, wrapping up a pandemic season for both of these teams and across the landscape of college football. Emotionally challenging for these athletes. Dealing with the start and stops, dealing with the pandemic, the disruptions, trusting the process, stressing over the testing, being separated from their family members. These are athletes who have endured a season like no other, and they are glad it is over. And in Iowa State's case, it wraps up perhaps the best season in school history. Well, Quint, it's obviously the players, it's the coaches, but how about the training staffs? The, the head athletic trainers, the assistant trainers, and all the, the number of hours that they've been working. First of all, those, those, those men and women work as hard as anybody in college athletics. Without but question. Now with all the testing. The behind the scenes people that, that deserve the most credit without without a doubt. And along those lines, I mean, for everybody to be following the procedures as best they can to be able to play in these games. And we've talked to both coaches and, and players obviously are getting breaks two to three weeks after this game is over to just decompress. And it really is more mentally decompression than physically on the, the season that's been. It's like they're going to let Nuwongu, who is the heart and soul of this team, finish it off running back. He's out to midfield, going to be third down here, timeout Oregon. So, you know, second. We, we've mentioned so many firsts for Iowa State this year and also for Brees Hall. There could be another one for the incredible season that, that he's had. And I just learned this yesterday, Dave. I did not know this. Now, he's a consensus All-American. There are five. Um, basically all American teams out there that, that, that are counted for this. If you make three of them, you're considered a consensus All-American. He's made four of the five, so he's a consensus All-American. The fifth, Walter Camp, is not out yet, so we don't know if he made that one. But if he makes that All-American team, he will then be a unanimous All-American. I didn't know there was a difference of consensus and unanimous, but again, as I said, especially for someone like me, I learn something every day. <laughs> Now, he's already consensus. He's the fourth Iowa State player to be a consensus All-American. If he were to be a unanimous All-American, if he's on that Walter Camp team, he will be the first player in Iowa State history to be a unanimous All-American. Would seem very fitting for Brees Hall to be on that team. We get the carry here. And again, with that great patience, he waits till the hole opens and gets the first down. 
Join us virtually for the college football playoff all access experience, exclusive content, games, and prizes available. Visit collegeplayoff.com forward slash all access for more information. Now, you know what to say about that game. Three of Alabama the, of the top five Heisman Trophy hopefuls, they have three? <laughs> three of the top five? Uh, I mean, it's, it, it's incredible. And they're getting the ice bath ready. It's going to feel a little bit better. It's cold here, but not Ames cold. So definitely will feel better here for Matt Campbell than it would for a home game. But what, what a year for Iowa State. Going to tie a school record with nine wins. It happened in 2000 and then happened in 1906. Right. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. No matter what the season throws your way, keep moving forward. Goodyear more driven. So quickly make up for my mistake. It's just Devontae Smith and Mac Jones. Two right for the highest. Right. Trevor Lawrence and Clemson. Kyle Trask. Yep. Florida. Oh yeah. Here we go. I always worry every time I see this the coach is going to get pointed with the, with the cooler. Because let me tell you the cooler's not light. It's a sturdy cooler. And does he know it's coming? Oh, of course he does. He got to, right? Yeah. So if you knew it was coming. This isn't his first rodeo. They've been winning a lot of games here at Iowa State. Would you play into it and just act like you didn't see it and, and <laughs> take it, or would you try and see it and run away from it? You can't run away from it because you'll never live it down. If you try to escape it or avoid it, your, your players will never let you forget it. I did the, uh, the Alamo Bowl, and, and Tom Herman, they got him really good. And now, as it turns out, it was his last game. Texas as he's not there anymore but got him really good with the bucket. Duongu on second down and seven will come up short. Oregon is out of timeout. Steve Sarkeesian the new head coach at Texas with that uh, news breaking today that Tom Herman is out at Texas. Don't forget we have another game tonight on ESPN down at the Orange Bowl which will also be uh, the site Miami Gardens Florida of the national championship game but we've got A&M and North Carolina coming up and then Monday January 11th but again just tip of the cap to all those involved with yes. college football to get us this far we just got about another nine days to go there were a lot of people that didn't think and some felt that we shouldn't get yeah. and it was a bumpy road point. at times there's no doubt it was a bumpy road at times as well but to those who you know did what they needed to do Congrats to all and, and enjoy the break that's about to come up. Iwan going third down and short, able to get the first down. It's going to do it. The best position uh, formation in all of football is a victory formation. As Matt Campbell's about to get the best bath there is in all of football. Well, we, we, we played that clip at the top of the telecast where Matt Campbell, when he took the job, talked about building the program and saying we just don't want to be the laughing stock of college football and there was a time where Iowa State right. was was in that conversation but now they're one of the the best programs I mean they're a top 10 team top 10 team they beat Oklahoma and Texas this year they made it to the Big 12 title game for the first time ever they make it into a New Year's Six Bowl game for the first time ever and they win it by the final score of 34 to 17 defeating the Pac-12 champion Oregon Ducks. Always, Dave, a, a, it's a bittersweet moment because at the end of every football season everywhere, the team is never the same. New players come in and older players leave. So there's a lot of happiness, a lot of joy right now, especially after the season that everybody just had right now. A lot of, lot of handshakes, a lot of hugging out there for the year that went on because a lot of guys end up moving on and it's, and it's a different team, but they get this moment they get these moments now on the field, these moments in the locker room. And I mean both sides as well. For Oregon, you're going to have players moving on as well, even though this isn't a loss where, you know, it's the last time you're all together as this particular group. As one group, as this group together, it will never be that way again. So you soak it up as much as you can. Final score, Iowa State 34, Oregon 17. Congratulations to the Cyclones. PlayStation Fiesta Bowl champions. We'll have the trophy presentation for you. But first, let's go to the studio with Matt Berry, Joey Galloway, and Jesse Palmer.
Iowa State wins the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl 34-17 over the Oregon Ducks. Dave Pash, Mike Golick, Quinn Kesnick back here, State Farm Stadium. Time now for the trophy presentation down on the field. Fans, please direct your attention down to the field as we begin today's post-game ceremony. Good evening, I'm Quinn Kesnick of ESPN. And let's first of all, let's hear it for the Iowa State Cyclones. In our socially distanced mosh pit, right now we've got two gentlemen from the bowl here to present some of the hardware, that gorgeous trophy. Joining us, Chairman of the Board, Patrick Barkley, and Executive Director, Mike Neely. They are here to present the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl trophy. On behalf of the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl, I'd like to congratulate both teams for an outstanding season and an amazing game today. It is our honor to present the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl Championship Trophy to Coach Matt Campbell and the Iowa State Cyclones. Coach, congratulations. What st stands out from today's victory? Well, you know, I, I'll just say this about this group behind you. You know, I, we started this season, and, you know, I think for Iowa State football, we wanted to prove that greatness isn't just for the chosen few, but it's greatness is for those who choose to be different and demand to become the best person themselves they can become. And, and I think what you've seen along the way is this group has never disappointed. They've become the greatest version of them, themselves that they could be. In the most challenging year in college football history, you've managed to win nine games. Say that again. One more time. In the most challenging year in college football history, you managed to win nine games. Tell us about the character of these young men. Well, I, I first want to just say to the parents, this doesn't happen without their support and belief in our program. Thank you very much. And the reality of it is, you know, we started in May and we've never had a day off. Our guys have stayed the course. We haven't missed a day, we haven't shut down, we haven't missed a game. And it's the commitment and the leadership in this room, our 16 seniors demanded this program and this team stay the course. That's why we're here today. What's the legacy of those seniors? Well, the, the legacy of this senior class is they're the one. This is the greatest football team in Iowa State history. They are the one. They trailblaze a trail that's never been done. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. We've got some positional offense and defensive awards to present as well. The offensive player of the game is Arizona's own Brock Purdy. Hold that trophy up, Brock. Let's go! Brock, watching you warm up today, I could see a certain focus, a certain excitement. What was it like for you to take the field in a game that you've watched since you were a little kid? Yeah, I mean, it was special for sure, but um, really what was going through my mind was, you know, I want to send out the seniors the right way. I'm going to give my all to my team. But yeah, being home, you know, it was nothing like I've ever experienced before. And I'm just excited we played together on all aspects. Um, and I wouldn't want to do it with anyone else or anywhere else. So I'm very blessed and I'm thankful for my, for my boys. You opened the game with a 15 play drive. You had a 14 play drive. You, you guys were ball hogs. What was most critical to establishing the game in your favor? I think just everyone doing their job. Offensive line did a great job of establishing the run. Brees and Kene, all the running backs doing their job. And then being able to throw to all my receivers and tight ends, they all did their thing. And so when we're all able to work like that and have the defense get stops, then we roll. And so I think that's the memo for this team. You know, we're humble. We, you know, we show um, everything through our actions. And even if it takes 15, 14 plays to score, that's what we'll do. And we'll do whatever it takes. So. What's this homecoming mean for you? It means everything. I mean, to be able to play in front of family, friends who've been there for me in my life on high school and everything um, is everything. But again, it's for these guys who have been grinding for three years. So glory to God. 
Congratulations, Brock. Yes, sir. Thank you, guys. Our defensive player of the game, Patrick. The defensive player of the game is Orion Vance. I got just one question for you, Orion. How do you pick up two fumble recovers in one game? Hey, man, I'm, I'm there. I'm, I'm doing my job, I'm staying there. And it's because of these guys. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be there. Thank you, Orion. Thank you, Brock. Coach Campbell, congratulations. Let's hear it for the Iowa State Cyclones. PlayStation Fiesta Bowl champions. We'd like to thank uh, PlayStation, the city of Glendale, and State Farm Stadium for hosting this game. I'd also like to point out this is our 50th anniversary, so I'd like to thank all of our volunteers, the committee, the staff, the board of directors for all their work over the last 50 years to make the Fiesta Bowl great. Happy New Year. All right, 34 17, the final. Iowa State. Knocks off Oregon. Dave Pash back with Mike Goldick here in the booth. Mike, uh, your final thoughts on what you saw here today? Well, first, let's let tip our caps to Oregon. You know, the way that that season started for them, all their opt-outs, the, they're the youngest team in the nation. They get a chance in the Pac-12 championship game, and they win. So they deserve their spot here and look to the future as the youngest team in the nation. So high hopes for them. For Iowa State, Listen, we, we have said it the, the, the entire game. Matt Campbell, is, Campbell has built an incredible program. The winning is class here. They have a lot to look forward to. They're going to lose some players, but he has got others coming in. He is building something here. So they're a physical team. They let you know when you're in a ball game. Uh, congrats to them on one of their greatest seasons ever in the best senior class that has ever attended Iowa State. Congrats to you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Legendary very much. career Thank at ESPN. You. Been uh, a class act. Great working with you all year, Mike. For Mike, for Quint Kesnick, I'm Dave Pash. So long from the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl where Iowa State beats Oregon 34-17. to We've got more college football to come tonight. Up next on ESPN, it's the Capital One Orange Bowl. Now a preview with Bob Wischusen.